Like I said, life is about moments and you have to take shots. Because if you don't take shots, what happens in life, I can talk about this now at 65 years old, where you never want to look in the mirror and say, you know, at 22, I had it, I had this idea, or at 27, or at 35, or at 40, I was going to do this, and you didn't. Because the thing that you learn most in life is that you can be successful, and it, you hit a, you know, a bad patch, and you can become successful again. You can make money, you can lose money, but the one thing you can never get back is time. Okay, so we're just going to go right into it. Let's go right into it. We're going to go right into it. I have today on the podcast someone that I'm very very excited to talk to. His name is Body by Jake. By the way, until very recently, I didn't even realize that your last... Oh, oh, that had a last name. Well, that you had a last name. Yes. I thought you were like Madonna, like Body by Jake was your name. I think that's great. Jennifer, it's great to be here. I'm going to lower the mic a little bit. Go ahead. Lower. Do whatever you need to do. Perfect. This, This is like the OG in fitness, everybody. So like I said... I did like if you don't know who Body by Jake is, uh, and you're a fitness person, you must be living under a rock because <laughs> he is legit a legend. He's created or like you're like the king of infomercials, number one. Wow, thank you. You're welcome. You've sold over two and a half billion dollars of fitness products, yes. right? You created Fit TV, then yes. sold it to was it Fox? Comcast? Yes. Yes. yes, Fox. Yes. Uh, he has a new drink uh, or a new protein shake drink. Yeah, called protein, Do- and then we're launching energy called Don't Quit. Don't Quit, great name for you. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, I want to hear all the like. I, I want to hear everything from like chronologically from the beginning. Oh my goodness. To where you are now. Chronologically. Yeah, chronologically. Well, all right. So listen, since the sun has come out now, it makes us feel better. We're living in yes, L.A. Yes, now we're smiling. Right? You know, this is great. <laughs> it's great to be here, Jennifer. I've heard a lot about you, too. So, you know, it's uh, awesome to see what you have done and what you're doing and and your mindset, which I really like. And that's Thank why I'm you. sitting here. But, Thank uh, you. This was never the plan for me. You know, I'll take you way back. I was born in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, I was an overweight kid. I had a bad stutter growing up. Um, really? my dad bought me a set of weights when I was 13 years old. You know, life is about moments. We'll talk a lot about yeah. that today is life is about moments. And, um, I'll never forget that moment. Cause it was the summertime. Uh, my dad was a guy who would only ask you to do something once. I'm the oldest of four kids. Um, and if you didn't take to it, it was over. And I'll never forget the moment. He called me out into the backyard. He had a weight bench set up with a, with a, with a straight bar and two look like plastic weights on the end of each side, wow. right? And he said, come on, let's do some bench pressing. And I kind of looked down at my Twinkies and I said, <laughs> you know, Dad, this is not for me. And like I said, that was the end of it. Now, I lived in the basement, which was the cool thing in New York. You know, the oldest son, mm-hmm. I, I lived in the basement. Um, I'll, I'll date myself. This is the seventies. So I had my black light posters. I had Jimi Hendrix on that wall. I had Alice Cooper on this wall. Um, I also used to love to listen to Frank Sinatra as I did it my way. And I was not good in school. I was not a student. And, uh, I was, I socially, I had a lot of friends, uh, but a little shy because of the stutter. I mean, I remember specifically when a teacher would say, we're going to read out loud today, if you remember growing up. And a teacher said, let's, let's take a paragraph, yep. and we'll read out loud. I would count the kids to where it was going to be up to me. Now, I could read, but I got so nervous yeah. that when you stutter, a D or a B or a T or a, an H, and once you get caught up, you're done. It's like a freight train crash, two freight trains crashing into each other. And I would memorize a paragraph, but inevitably I would start to stutter. My friends would laugh. And I was smart enough to sit behind two kids that stuttered worse than me. <laughs> so by the time they got to me, you sounded great. The kids were already, I sounded like Maya Angelou, <laughs> you, you know. And, and so it was, uh, you know, it was, it, it was that kind of moment. I love but that. but um, so here I am at this moment. I'm not a, I'm not a school guy. I don't really love school. I don't know how to study. I don't know what to underline when you're supposed to underline things. And I'm at my desk because I have to do homework at night, like I had to do every night. But whatever the reason was, this night was different. And for some reason, I kind of glanced into the laundry room, which was right off of my bedroom door. And there was this weight 
this, 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 this bar it was an easy curl bar, a bent bar that my father had bought along with the bench that I never touched, and it was sticking out. And I look back, I look back, I look down, I'm underlining everything, who knows what I'm doing, and for some reason I got up, I walked into the laundry room, I picked up this easy curl bar, I walked into my bedroom, I had this little skinny mirror that was behind my door, and I had an ottoman, you know, one of those, one of those yeah. ottomans, right? I put the skinny mirror on top of my ottoman, I had Frank Sinatra's I Did It My Way, the album, on my record player. I queued up the album to where there was like 20 seconds of wild applause for Frank, right? Uh -huh. I, queued, true, I queued it up to those 20 seconds. I had this, well, let me tell you, I had an afro. I had this yes, no mustache, which was like a little bit of hair here. I'm 13, right? <laughs> no hair here. I thought I was cool, right? And I had my... my T-shirt on with my underpants, with my stomach hanging over my underpants, right? <laughs> and it was a great look. And, oh, by the way, I had braces, too, right? You I must have been a real looker. Oh, it was a great look, Jennifer. <laughs> Don't get me started. So I queued up the song. I put the cans on, right, my, 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 my headphones. And I started doing bicep curls. And I'm looking in the mirror. Jake Steinfeld doing his bicep curls to 20,000 screaming fans at Madison Square Garden. Oh, my gosh. And that was where the insanity began, because right there, the weights and I connected, like, like nothing else connected. I mean, I played Little League Baseball, I played basketball, uh, but this was something different, and it made me feel good. I stood up straighter. I started working out. You know, the girls started to recognize, and I immediately said, one day, I'm going to go to California, and I'm going to become Mr. America, and every one of my friends laughed, and everybody. You know, you know, yeah. when you tell someone a dream, and... Uh, how that happens in your life. A lot of people do it in jest, but a lot of people sometimes do it because they don't want to see you get hurt. They're, they're, oh, you don't try that. You, you know, that's that. Stay, go to college. Right. Or, do the safe and, route. Do the yes. safe route, right? And how many people who are listening to this, because, you know, like I said, life is about moments and you have to take shots. Because if you don't take shots, what happens in life, I can talk about this now at 65 years old, where you, you never want to look in the mirror and say, you know, at 22, I had, a, I had this idea, or at 27, or at 35, or at 40, I was going to do this, and you didn't. Because the thing that you learn most in life is that you can be successful, and it, you hit a, you know, a bad patch, and you can become successful again. You can make money, you can lose money. But the one thing you can never get back is time. And... Here I was telling everybody, I'm going to become Mr. America. And, well, I went to college, upstate New York, you know, Cornell you oh, University. Yeah, you know Cornell, great school, right? 100%. Yeah. You went, I went to the, store, the, the school beside it? I went to Cortland. Yeah, right, <laughs> right, I went right down the street. Yeah, yeah so you know the bit. And, uh, <laughs> I know the bit. Yeah. You, you know the bit. Um, where I lasted three months. Uh, and it, where basically it snowed every day since the day you get up there. Yeah. And it's not too conducive to walk around in your gold lame posing trunks <laughs> in 18 <laughs> inches of snow, you know? No. And uh, I remember the moment, yeah. right, where my mother, who used to call in, used to call me every, every day just to check in. Right, right, right. How's poli sci? How's English? <laughs> this. And I finally get up enough courage and I finally said, Ma, I'm going to go to California to become a bodybuilder. Silence on the phone. Herbie, pick up the phone and talk to your kid. I'm putting my head in the oven. <laughs> and uh, I'll never forget the bus ride home from upstate New York to Baldwin, Long Island. Um, like, oh, my God, I, 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 I said it. That it was a, like a thousand-pound weight lifted off of my back. But there I was afraid that, oh, my God, maybe they'll let me go, you know, and right. now I'm going to have to do this thing. How old are you at this point? 18. 18, okay. I'm 18 years old. And, um, and I got home. My, my parents did what parents would do. Look, you know, my father said, get it out of your system. You'll be back in six months. Well, you could come back home. <laughs> We're not going to take you out of college, you know, but just go take, go do whatever you got to do. Yeah. And uh, I had a girlfriend at the time, and I, a bunch of my buddies, and I went to see them, and they said, are you crazy? You're never going to become Mr. America. What are you doing? What's wrong with you? You know, you, you, it's not going to happen. And you see that everybody around me 
And it took time to learn that there were some people who believe that if Jennifer is successful, that means I can't be successful. Mm -hmm. So that there's not enough success to go around, which I think is bullshit because all boats rise. So if Jennifer is successful, we're friends, maybe there's a chance that I can see what she's doing. We could all be successful. There's well, plenty of room. 100%. But I also think there's also a piece to it where you know, you, they're not doing what they want to do. And so there, there's an envy, a jealousy that you're actually going out there and doing it. Like subconsciously, people have all sorts of reasons why. But they have, every, everybody has dreams. Everybody has everybody a dream. Everybody has a dream, but about 99.9% .9 of the people don't ever act on those dreams. They don't attempt it. Because they're afraid to fail. Mm -hmm. And the great thing about not being great at school is I, I brought the flag home a lot on my report card, Fs. You know, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I used to, I used to say you used to bring the flag home. You, you know, that's hilarious. And you know, but it, and, and and it's interesting because it's it's always the kids with the C average, high the kids with the A average, mm -hmm. because kids who are so you know wound up, I have to be perfect. That's not business. That's not an entrepreneur, as you know, in what you've done in your career. There is no straight line to success. Mm -mm. There is no straight line to. Yeses, mm -hmm. right? Like I, we've had this conversation. I get told no a thousand times a day, yeah. but to me, no is halfway to yes. Yeah. And I make the trek out to LA. Uh, I'm out here for a couple of months. And uh, where'd you move? Venice Beach? No, I okay. wish. I, I, my parents had a friend who had a friend <laughs> who told somebody else who said, "Oh, your son is going to go to California. He has to live in the San Fernando Valley." Oh. So okay, I don't. Where? What? What is that? What is the San Fernando Valley? Right. Is it close to to, to Gold's Gym? Which, by the way, Gold's Gym, right. Joe Gold at that moment had sold his name and he opened up a place called World Gym. Oh yeah. On Main Street. I remember right? that. Yep. In Santa Monica, right? And it was on the second floor, second story, and it was all men, only guys, no music, right? There was no music, no women, just guys, and it was all muscle heads. Yeah. That's all it was. Oh. And uh, I had a, a white 1977 Camaro, right? My, my dad gave me a 200 and some odd dollars to have helped lease a car and something to help with rent. And then I'm on my own. And I had this white Camaro with Jake 77 on the license plate. I got one of those license plates. because oh, I like vanity always ones. kept a very low profile. <laughs> it's very important as an entrepreneur. And um, I used to drive to World Gym every day. And from the San Fernando Valley, over the hill. So if you know the 405 yeah. to the 10 and, you know. How long did it take? Like an hour? Well, time? however it took, it was like not close. Let's just put it close. that way, right? It was right? like a three-hour trek back it, and it, forth. And, and it was, I was in the Mecca. And, and I said, when I came to L.A., summer 1977, it's when the dinosaurs still roamed the earth. Wow. And what I mean by that is in the, in the world of bodybuilding, Pump and Iron had just come out, Arnold, Louie, all the big bodybuilders, yeah. and they were there. So it was like the muscle magazines came to life for me. And here it was in living color, like, oh, my God, man. I, I'm nowhere near the size of these guys, right. you know. And Wow. Were you working I, out with Arnold? Did you see Arnold Schwarzenegger every day? Uh, well, listen, I've known Arnold since I'm 19. Yeah. And Arnold and I have been Probably friends. Probably best friends uh, now. Yeah. Well, we, we've been very good friends for when he was governor. I, he named me chair of the fitness council in California in 2006. But we could talk about that. Yeah. But, uh, but at that moment when he was, you were 19, how old was he? Like maybe 26, Well, whatever it was, whatever it he was, was the king. And, he, was you a, know, but he was a king already back then. Well, he was the king because he was Mr. Olympia. But he that movie, already. Pumping Iron, oh, had come huge. out. Yeah. Which was a major thing. Huge. I'll, I'll give you a great little story. And this, I don't tell this a lot. Before I got to L.A., I'm in New York. I'm upstate. My grandmother, who was my biggest fan, right, who is my mentor, she, when I told everyone I was going to be a bodybuilder, everyone said no. And she said, whatever we have to do, let's get it done. You know, in her great words. Yeah. And i never forget getting a phone call from her. She says, look, darling, um... Uh, I got two tickets for us. There's a screening of a new movie uh, called Pumping Iron, right? I want you to come down to New York City, and you and I are going to go. And I was like, oh, my God, this is crazy. So I take the bus down to New York. Now, this is why my, in between my three months of being in New York, before I get to L.A., everything, I'm sitting in a theater on Madison Avenue, right? It's uh, October, November. 
So it's a little, it's a little snowy. It's a cold day, not knowing what Pump and Iron was, but knowing that Arnold Schwarzenegger is in this movie, right? I'm thinking, I'm just thinking, this guy's going to be there. Man. I'm going to meet this guy, right. right? And we walk in, and I had never seen, with the exception of, right, I trained at a place in Long Island called Future Man. And there was a guy that ran the place. I won't use his name because I'm going to say something not great. Is he had won the Mr. Apollo contest in 1975, and I was in 11th grade, and I entered the Mr. Teenage Delmarva, Delaware, Maryland, and Virginia, on a park bench on a lake in Delaware. I asked this guy. I walked up to him. It took me enough courage to walk up to this guy, Mr. Apollo. Could you teach me how to pose? And I'm in 11th grade. Right? Yeah. And he goes, no. I was heartbroken, man. And I walked away, and his training partner comes over to me, and he goes, Jake, listen, don't worry. You know, Mr. Apollo, he doesn't, he doesn't want to help you because your shoulders are bigger than his. I go, I'm 17. He's a grown-up. You know <laughs> I mean? I think I just get a... So I'll never forget being on that, on, wow. that, on that park bench. I came in fifth place. Uh, I, I had the sudden tan all over me. One of my brothers came with me. My grandma came with me. I had Johnson's baby oil on. I figured maybe I'll choose a number. I'll get a number that I can watch a bunch of guys pose first and yeah. learn. Number one. Number one. I get up on that thing and I do a lat no spread. I, I do this double lat spread like this. My thumbs come flying off, you know, no, like a grease watermelon man. <laughs> I came in fifth place, which was I got a plaque and it was a, like a, gr a great moment. So cut to here I am in New York City. I had never seen a real bodybuilder with the exception of Mr. Apollo. Right. And this guy, if you know bodybuilding, at was Ed Corney, who was Mr. Hawaii, he had won Mr. Universe. He's on stage before the movie begins, and he's doing this posing routine. And I'm like this, I'm out of my mind. Like, Grandma, this is, this is the greatest thing in the world. He does this incredible, he was a, just a, an artist, the way he posed and everything. And it was over, the lights come down, the movie comes up. I mean, look, Pump and Iron is like my gone with the wind. I know, you exactly, know? Yes. I mean, it's, it's incredible. The movie is over, and I'm looking around like, Where's Arnold? You know, Arnold's here for sure. I'm a little disappointed that I don't see the dude in the audience. Yeah. So I don't know from a, from a screening. Usually you go to a screening, everyone sits through all the credits and everything. I got up with my grandma. <laughs> <laughs> Movie's over. Let's get out of here, you know? Right, right, right. We walk out. I'll never forget in this theater, two huge doors. We push it open into this foyer, right? And there's Arnold standing right there with had his girlfriend with him, his blonde girl. And I walk right over to him, and I just shake his hand. And I, I don't say any words. And I'm just shaking his hand like this. And it felt like I was there for two hours. And people started coming out. And he finally broke away from me. Like, you know, okay. Yeah, exactly. Like, let's, let's easy keep buddy. This, let's, yeah, keep, exactly. let's keep this guy. Yeah. Let's keep an eye on this guy. Yeah. And I just stood there, right, until everybody left. And then, uh, truly, everybody left. And Arnold walked out with his girlfriend, and it was kind of snowing, and my grandma says, don't you want to say something to Arnold Schwarzenegger? I said, uh, 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 like this. Yeah, you she have goes, no idea what to say. She looks at me. She walks outside, and she goes, Arnold? Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> he turns around and says, how you doing? How you doing? Did you like the movie, you know? <laughs> and he says, my grandson has a question for you. And he comes back in, like I said, this is all straight up true. Comes back in with his girlfriend, right? And he says, uh, and Arnold always speaks about himself in the third person. So he says, uh, how you doing? Uh, do you have a question for Arnold? And I said, um, what do you do for your calves? <laughs> <laughs> that was my question. That was your so big he question? So he, he answered. And it sounded like Charlie Brown. I'm sure. Wah, 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 wah. And then he turned around and walked out. And my grandmother looks at me. What do you do for your calves? What's wrong with you? What do you do for your calves? <laughs> so I, all, all I remember. That, I love your just, grandmother. She, you know, she was, she, she was amazing. Oh. And that was an incredible moment. And, uh, and then here I am in L.A. seeing these guys in real life. And um, I, I had entered the Mr. Southern California contest, um, 1978. I came in second place. I read all the wow. muscle magazines. Everybody said, eat 18 eggs, 24 chickens a day. You two could become Mr. America. I clucked a lot. 
<laughs> but it didn't happen for me because I never took steroids. And the one thing oh. that no one ever talked about in the magazines were steroids. And I had to make a decision because here I am, 19 years old now, and um, I don't want to go back to New York a loser. Right? So I kept, all I kept out here was my friends, my girlfriend, my family. And the only thing that I, that, that in order to compete professionally, you have to take steroids. And it's common knowledge today. It's not, there's nothing behind right. closed doors anymore. Is there was, natural uh, well, there uh, is, stuff, but no one really There does is it. today, yeah. but back then there was nothing natural. There was natural. nothing natural. No, there was nothing yeah. natural. Anyway, so what ended up happening was I decided, because I was afraid, uh, not to take steroids. And uh, I just knew that my dream of being Mr. America was not going to happen. I knew I wasn't going to go back to New York. I love working out, and I love how I felt. So I said, whatever's going to happen is going to happen because I, I love how I feel when I'm training. And I'm living in Studio City, California, uh, in an apartment complex. That... So you moved from San Fernando Valley. Yes. Okay. And now I'm in Studio City. And uh, uh, for a short amount of time, so, so what ended up happening was I'm at the gym. And a couple of things happened at World Gym that I'm kind of skating over. But uh, two, two major things. One, this guy comes up to me and says, hey, you know, your facial structure looks a lot like Louis Ferrigno's. Uh, have you ever done stunts before? And I said, well, you know, I grew up in New York. Sure, I've done plenty of stunts, you know. <laughs> and uh, they said, well, they're casting a double for this new TV show, The Incredible Hulk, for Louie. You should go down to Universal Studios. I go, okay, what do you do? They go, just go down there. They give, the guy, give me a guy's name. I went down. They put me in green paint. I think I sent you the picture. And, no, uh, you never oh, did. Oh, no, I didn't. Oh, no, I got to send no, you the picture. No, you sent it to me, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. And... Uh, you know, there's no lines. I'm not memorizing a line, you know. Um, and, you know, you got to growl. They have me in front of this. got my corduroy cutoffs yeah. on and, uh, you know, green paint. And you know, I'm in the shower. I come out. They go, could you start working on Monday? And I said, doing what? They said, well, the double for Lou Ferrigno. And I did the double stuff for part of the first season of The, the Incredible Hulk. And, and then they moved me to the Universal Studios tour, where I was the Incredible Hulk up there. And I used to go back to the gym, right? And this one day I'm at the gym, because I train early in the morning, and a lot of different kind of very interesting people. Tommy Chong from Cheech and Chong yeah. used to train there. And Tommy is an incredible guy, in cre incredible shape to this day. He is? It's, it's, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's staring at me, right? Uh -huh. Now, remember, I'm now 19, uh, almost 20 years old. And he's looking at me, and he's going, and I recognize him from Up in Smoke, the movie, yeah, right? Of course, yeah. So yes, Tommy comes up to me, and uh, and he sees he's looking at me, and he goes, "Dude, you're sweating green, man." And because you know, I had this oil base on oh, my face, wow. and it's water base from my neck down, but I'm touched up like eight times during a day. A day. Yeah. And you know, so you played a you played the, the you played the incredible yeah, the, Hulk, the double the right, double right exactly as a side gig as a, as the gig what do you mean as the, oh, well, as the well gig. my side gig was bouncing in a bar too I was bouncing in a bar so you so know so you're you're a bouncer I was a bouncer you were uh, you were the incre you were the the incredible, the incredible Hulk, Hulk right Hulk exactly double. right okay and, and so. Then, so, and you must have so, been like jacked back then, like uh, I crazy. Was, yeah, I weighed two fifty. At the, How much so do you weigh I now? Two twenty. Okay, and you are not on any steroids. I never took anything. You never took I never anything. Took, I never took anything. Never took anything, and that was the thing, you know. So you naturally were naturally. able to be that big. Yeah, but I was big, but I, you know, you don't get ripped. So I mean, I was I was big. Yeah. For for the Mister for the Mister Southern California contest, I went from two thirty to two hundred one. Okay, wow. and I was I mean I was ripped, but I got. I smoothed out right before the contest. Yeah. You know, the like timing was off. You go to zero carbs, and you look great, but you can't spell your name. No, you know, you so cannot. I said, says, what's your last name? Uh, totally. Uh, look at my abs. <laughs> uh, hang on a second. Let me hit this for you. <laughs> <laughs> hang on a second. Wait, wait a second. Check this out. You, you know. That's so true. Uh, my name? Uh, I don't remember. But anyway. Um, but you were just eating tons of pro. Okay, we'll, we'll get to that after. I yeah. Know. So 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 um, uh, you know, I'm I'm living in Studio City at this apartment complex, right? Because it was very yeah. close to Universal Studios. So 
in between doing the Hulk stuff at the studio tour, bouncing in a bar, every good muscle head, I catch rays, yeah, you know, right, right, and right. I sit in the sun <laughs> and uh, paying for it now, but I sit in the sun. Yeah. And uh, this one day, uh, this, this actress comes over to me and uh, I know she's an actress because she introduces herself as, as an actress, as an actress and, and she was getting ready to do a Club Med commercial and she had six weeks to get in shape. And she said, you know, I really, I need help. And, uh, you know, I like you, Jake, um, but I don't want to look like you. Now, remember, so this is 1980. So this is at the time when, a little before Jane had come on to the scene, Jane Fonda right. came on the scene. But at that time, you know, women were very intimidated by using weights, right. thinking they were going to get big muscles. Were they doing gym, so, like, uh, aerobic, aerobics back then? There was no, not yeah. much going on. No, there really, not even there, there wasn't really much going on, right? So um, It was mostly just so, men. So it was, yeah, I mean, it was, yeah, there was just guys wow. doing, no, there was women exercising, obviously. Yeah. But... Here we are, and she says, could you help me? And I said, um, okay. She goes, you know, could you come up with a workout for me? And I said, ah, okay, I think I could do that. She goes, how much is it going to cost? I go, oh, my gosh, it, uh, give me gas money, you know, yeah. my 1977 white Camaro yeah. with Jake 77 on the license plate. And uh, she said, could you come to my boyfriend's house and do the workout there? And I said, no problem. She gave me an address in Beverly Hills. I'll be there. So I came up with this workout. It was a 30-minute workout. Because when I go to the gym, to this day, I mean, I have a gym in my home, but, you know, when I used to go to a gym, even when I was heavy into the bodybuilding stuff, I loved the gym, but I never loved hanging out in the gym. I got my workout done, and I got out. Yeah. And I thought, okay, this, this woman needs to get in shape. She got to wear a bikini is what she said. She looked great to begin with. I think what she really needed was the confidence and the self-esteem to put that bikini on in front of a lot of people on a set, right? right. So yes. you know being on a set at that time, especially, there's a lot of people. So she wanted to feel confident. Yep. So, okay, she wanted to work out. And um, I came up with a 30-minute workout, figuring that's going to be plenty, right? Yeah. She won't even make it to the 30 minutes. And I improvised with a broomstick, a towel, and a chair. And basically, the chair is for dips and push-ups. Yeah. The towel is for resistance training, right? You would, if, if I pull down on this towel, Jennifer, and you pull up on the towel, you do your biceps, you could do your triceps over the head, we could do lap pulls, and the, the broomstick was for stretching, mm -hmm. right? Lunges and stretching and squatting. Super simple, right? Yeah. Uh, went to her boyfriend's house and knocked on the door, and if you weren't on the cover of Musclehead Digest, I didn't know who you were, and the uh, guy answers the door. It turns out to be Francis Ford Coppola. And I just said, uh, oh, this guy could use a workout too, you know? <laughs> and uh, she started getting into great shape and they started going to parties and people started saying, you know, my God, you look great. What are you doing? This guy, Jake, he comes to the house. He's got this 30 minute workout with a broomstick and a towel. He's, he's really funny. He eats too much. They had a great fridge. And after the workout, I would sit down. I had no money. So yeah. they had chicken and all kinds of stuff in the refrigerator. So I would sit down and talk to them and I would eat. Oh my god! And, um, and you, when did you start training Francis? Like right away? It wasn't even. I I, I never trained. Oh, him. you never it, trained no, him? Okay. No, no, no. Just it her. Was, it was just yet. Yeah. Okay. And and uh, and what what the, the crazy thing was? It wasn't even Francis. It was it was this girl's boyfriend who was staying at the house. One of his producers. So it's just the timing. It's it's about moment. Life is yeah. about moments, and right? Yeah. So people started saying, well, "That's a great idea." What's the guy's phone number? And the one thing that I never did, now this, this is going to date me, right? Yeah. But when you would move somewhere, you would have to list your phone number in the phone book, right? Yeah. There was no cell phones, right. right? I came to LA. I was 18 years old. I didn't forgot to list my name. Right. So I had an unlisted phone number. And one thing about this town is if you're good and people want to get a hold of you and they can't, they seem to want you more. Yeah. And it became this mystique of who is this guy? Get him, find him, and in my, in my little now I had now I had moved to Westwood I, on Veteran. I lived okay, actually not that far from where you where, are. Oh now. my gosh! Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, and um, and on my little answering machine that I used to have that little 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 box you yeah. used to dial your phone number and then put the yeah, and then yeah, the yeah. machine would roll backwards right, and you'd hear messages. Yeah. 
Steven Spielberg, Harrison Ford, Priscilla Presley, Bette Midler, Warren Beatty, Barbara Streisand. They all I mean, called you? They all called. At the same time? Like, what Not happened? At the same minute. Well, who called but you first? But it was just, uh, Steven Spielberg. Okay, he says what to you? They, well, somebody called for Steven Spielberg and said, we, you know, we hear what you do. Would you please come to this house here in Benedict Canyon? So who was the one who, so if you went from the well, girlfriend. When, when I went to the, so what, what really I have to be, I'm going to be very straight. So the first, the first, it was, it kind of, it happened at once. It really did. There was nothing and then it was insane. And then it was like from these people I learned, first of all, I started traveling with them. I trained Harrison, you know, for Temple of Doom. Um, oh, you did? For Indiana yeah, Jones? Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. how did you have a case? So I want I to know, these are the devils in the details. You went from this girl doing a broom and a towel. Right. Okay, so everyone wanted your number. Who was the first person that actually called you? Was it Steven Spielberg? Yeah, it was Spielberg. And, to do and, Temple of Doom? To do the no, one for gosh, him? To no, do him. for him, he had just finished E.T. E e As a matter of fact, E.T. was coming out. Okay. And so he ET wanted... was coming out. He just wanted for his head. You know. Was there anyone? Was there? Was training even a thing no, at all? No, it wasn't a thing a at thing all. A thing at all, right? So was it, it kind of like this? If, was it like this? Uh, here's, this... here's a, let me just tell you yeah. this. Okay. So here's here's the deal. So I'm training these people, and a publicist reaches out to me. A publicist. I don't know anything yeah. from a publicist, and says, "Hey, I'm hearing your name everywhere at these Hollywood parties." Uh, I love what you're doing. Um, what's the name of your company? And I go, I didn't have it. There was no name for my company. Uh, and I just said to her, uh, huh, um, Body by Jake. And she goes, wow, that, it's tremendous. That, that's, really, that's really cool. So it gave me this idea. This is all, uh, give me in real time. I had 12 T-shirts made up, right? And... I gave them to the 12, my 12 original clients, right? And I'll never forget, it said Body by Jake on the front. On the back, it said the Steinfeld method, okay? Really? True story. And I'll never forget giving the T-shirt to Steven Spielberg, who I call Wheels. I, I give everyone a nickname. I've done it since I was a kid. Every grade I've ever been in, everyone that we meet, I meet, I give a nickname to. And it, it kind of breaks the ice. And it, it kind of levels the playing field. Yep. So whether you're a billionaire, whoever you are, now we're level and we, we, we went to junior high together. I love and it. And it's a really fun thing to do. And, and it takes the ego out of people and it just makes everyone relaxed. So Spielberg had Cole Wheels, Harrison is H. You know, it's, uh, there are some fun names. But it, the, what, what happened was it really simple is that these people, it really worked for them. And people got engaged with it. And this publicist, and I hand this T-shirt to Steven Spielberg, and he goes, wow, Body by Jake. He goes, Jake, that, that's, a, like, that's, a, that, that's a brand. You know, it, it, that's a brand. He goes, the Steinfeld method? He goes, lose it. <laughs> that sounds like a, that's a fad. You, you know, he goes, fads come and go, but brands could live forever. And that was in 1981, he told me that. And it was really interesting wow. because, uh, and then People Magazine did an article on me. Um, I was training Terry Gar, if you remember yeah, Terry, of right? Did, yeah. the Tootsie. And, um, totally. and, and, and I started right off the bat with these people. I would say I wanted an end credit. Like I have end credit, Body by Jake is end credit in Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. We get end so credit smart. in like 50 movies. Um, Cause, you know, Did you think training, of that yourself? Yeah, that was all... But you know why? Because I'm hanging around with these people. Here's the thing. I mentioned those people's incredible names. I learned about life from these people, the great and the bad, all together. I went to your home. I was with you. We traveled together. I mean, I'm on the Warner Jet with Steven Spielberg and Michael Jackson. You know? Amazing. Incredible moments. And it just... What it did for me... It just gave me all the incentive to say, you know what? I might never direct an ET2, but I'm going to have my own success in life. Mm -hmm. And just like when I speak and I say that, you know, you very rarely get a chance to meet these kinds of people, but you learn they're just like us. The only difference is they had a dream and they never quit on their dream and they never took no for an answer. And I said, ah, okay, okay, I can do this. What is this? I don't know. But I'm going to create it. Yeah. And the world lets you be what you make them believe you are. And for me, fitness and working out truly was a means to an end. I mean, 
I, I, I train six days a week to this day. I love it, man. It's my drug. It's my, you know, um, I, I, I would be banging off the walls, you know. Right. Today they call it ADHD, and I mean, I'm sure that's what I had growing up. I mean, between that and the stutter and being overweight and having an afro with braces, yeah. you know, woo! <laughs> You're exactly. Woo! If you turned out okay, what check happened, please. What happened exactly? What happened to the stutter? It's gone. You know, it's interesting. The stutter, and and thankfully for my parents, you know, they uh, school wanted to put me in like that room two twenty two. And um, they said, no, keep him, keep him right where he is. And I had to deal with it. And I think it's, it was the greatest thing for me. Um, you know, look, I got made fun of a lot as a kid, you know. And there were still moments where, you know, you get caught up, things get tight. But you, I learned how to breathe through it. So if you get, you know, when you speak, you don't speak from here. You speak from here. So... A stutterer, what happens is, well, I, I've done a lot of stuff. I, I got, uh, I, I was given an award at the, the first, um, the National Stutterers Association, right? Me, Carly Simon, and Kenyon Martin, the basketball player. Wow. And Carly has a stutter too. I don't know if you know that or not. No, that, never, but never when she, that. But when she sings, she doesn't stutter. And I'll never forget when I spoke to an entire room of kids who stuttered. And I remember what, what happened. The worst thing you can do to someone who stutters is try to help them. Meaning, if I'm sitting here and I'm going like this, Gen and you go, Jennifer, I would have shut you down. I would have taken the mic off and walked away. I mean, obviously, I was a little kid. Yeah, I, no, I didn't, I, I didn't I have a mic it. on. I wouldn't be in <laughs> here. But, you know, I would walk away. Right, I see what you're saying. And, and, but, you, but you learn. And, like, we all have, everybody has their own mishigas, is like yes, my grandmother would say, Gass. right? I love your grandmother. You She's know, such a Jewish so grandmother. The best. It's unbelievable. The best of all time. Yeah, and, and we all have what we have to deal with. But I was very, I was very fortunate that I had parents who, you know, it wasn't about tough love. It was about the fact that, you know, hey, he'll get through it. And I did. I did. I never, thankfully, I never, I didn't have, I don't say thankfully, I never speech pathologist. I mean, you know, none of that kind of stuff. And I'll never forget the moment. I have four kids. So when my daughter Morgan was born, um, it was an incredible moment. Obviously, having kids, you know, Jennifer. And, uh, and I was taking her to preschool. And she's in her car seat in the back seat. And we're on PCH, right? And we're looking at the ocean. And we had Radio Disney on at the time. I don't even know if they have Radio Disney anymore. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. She's 30 now. Uh, lives in London, doing great. And she was a real talker. And then all of a sudden, she started going like this. And my, like, I hit the brakes. And I I was frightened. And for like a week, she was stuttering. And I would literally, this is the truth, I would sit in my office and cry and tell my wife, I go, I did this. This is, I gave, this is, uh, uh, this is a curse, right? Right. Well, I don't know what I did. Why is she stuttering? So I decided I was going to call a speech tutor, right? A right? And I asked, I said, whoever the person was, was dynamite. I get the person on the phone. This woman says, um, can I ask a couple of questions? I said, yes. She said, um, do you, are you always asking your daughter questions? I go, well, yeah. She goes, well, when people are around, do you ask her to do things, like show off a little bit, like, because she speaks. The, I go, yes. She goes, um, do you ever give your daughter a chance to say something before you say something? <laughs> I go, no. <laughs> She goes, okay, you're going to do this for me for two weeks. You're going to shut up, okay? That's hilarious. <laughs> and for two weeks, I did it. And fortunately, she came right back to it. But it was a moment where I got, you know, because it's a defining moment for me of being a stutterer. It's who I, it's, it's always there. Right, right, right. But I right. saw my daughter doing it. And uh, yeah. I mean, listen, I still go to school like when they're grown-ups now. I have four kids. But when I used to go to school, like open school nights and yeah. things like that, I still found myself counting, even as who I, you know, a successful guy. I have my own TV shows. Counting to the point that when they got to me, I know, what, you still have I those was things. what I was going to say. 
true story. <laughs> I love that because those, those things still live within of you. Of course they do. You don't. Yeah. You're just. You be just. No matter how successful you are, those right. are still those yeah. things that like gave you so much self. Yeah, doubt. yeah, yeah. That's so interesting. Of all the people that you worked with, a Steven Spielberg, Harrison Ford, who taught you the most, and who did you like the best? Oh my gosh, I, I, I've been very blessed. They've they in their own way, every single one of them have been great to me. Um, the one that it's it wasn't about taught me or did, who, so much. Not taught, but like who did you pick well, up Well, Spielberg the most? was like became my big brother, man. Y right. You know, and um, he gave me this ability. This, uh, I mean, he opened the doors for, for me at Universal probably. Studios. I mean. Uh, in, in 1983, I did my first exercise video. I had a dream to, because of who I'm training. Yeah. I you were want, training I, legitimately the biggest, like at the, that time, there was nobody more like, success. I mean, he was like the God. Well, he was, yeah. Still is, but like. But all those guys were. I mean, every, all of them. every single one of them. And I would go to Universal Studios and I would be able to walk into the commissary and sit with Lou Wasserman, who, if you don't know who he was, he's the chairman. Yeah. At Universal yeah. Studios, Were and you I training say, him too. No, no, no. But okay. he he was became a friend because of Spielberg. Yeah. And I had this dream to do the first original soundtrack to an exercise video, right? And we got music. I went to Irving Azoff, who was the biggest man in music. He was running MCA Records. I would never have been afforded that opportunity if it wasn't for the relationship so that I had with Steven Spielberg, you, you know, and, and how long did you train him for, by the way, how many years for eight years, eight years. Yeah. But I, all I did body by Jay, me doing the training with people was eight years. And then I woke up one morning and I said, today it was in 1988. I said, 87. I said, today is the last day I trained somebody because what was starting to happen was there were a lot of people becoming trainers and I had a television show on now. I had my Body by Jay show. Ted Turner gave me you my had the start. Show already? Oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. So you were still training Steven Spielberg when you got well, the show? Well, I trained a bunch of, yeah, I, I was training some people. I had my brothers come in and, and started training yeah. most of the people. But I woke up this one morning saying, you know what? I'm finished. Um, there's, there, there's no more, there's not one other person that I want to train. And I've done what I've done with it. It's been great. And it's given me this ability to now Ted Turner, right, on on Cable News Network, right, these fitness yeah, breaks that I, I remember, did that yeah. were global. Um, I did I did books with Simon & Schuster, my exercise videos with MCA. Uh, Was this all in the 80s still, the 80s yeah, to 90s? Yeah, all 80s. All, all 80s. 80s. Yeah, yeah, 80s were, that's when it all really popped for me. Not, not, nothing in the 90s? Oh, the 90s was, that's the infomercial world. That's because 90s well, was, the a, that was a Well, the infomercial, and then Fit TV, and then it was a, it was a completely different. 100%. It was, a, it was a different realm of business. It was, a, it, was fa it was the next phase. But right. But let's stay in the same, I, I love this 80s phase, because it's like so fascinating. So did you train Michael Jackson? Did you train? No, I was on, I just knew Michael because of Steven Spielberg, right? And and we were, I, I, I took to, uh, I was going to New York with Wheels. Because you and, traveled with Wheels. Yeah, Steven and Spielberg. we were on a Warner okay. Jet, and uh, he said, we have a guest, and Michael Jackson shows up, and uh, and he had my exercise video, and he had E.T., and for the plane ride over, he was asking me questions about lighting and things like that, and the rest of the trip, he was asking Stephen about, you know, E.T., e why this scene, why that. He was amazing, and he was incredible. He was an incredibly sweet guy. Really? It was, it was always nice. Listen, I mean... Um, I trained Bette Midler, who I love, right? I mean, I trained Bette for Down and Out in Beverly Hills. Oh, my gosh, I love that when, movie. When she was, she was out of business before that, right? She, she was? She had done a film called Jinxed that didn't do anything. And then um, Disney asked me to train her for Down and Out in Beverly Hills, and it became a big hit. Yeah. And then I trained her again for Ruthless People. And if you ever watch Ruthless People again, she gets locked in a basement. Yeah. And the workout she does, I developed the workout because it's with paint cans and a broomstick That's and right. stuff like that. I re and she got super fit. And she got super fit. Yeah. And she, Oops. of all people, sat on Johnny Carson. Yeah. And he said to Bet, you look great. What are you doing? And Johnny says, you're working with Body by Jake. And she goes, no, don't say that name. And she stood on the, on the I mean, literally stood on his uh, desk. And they did this like two and a half minutes on me, and it was just incredible. And she was, it was a bit, but it was absolutely incredible. And she's always been dynamite to me. And uh, I mean, it's, it's been, 
I, I, listen to me, Jennifer, I've been very blessed, man. And, and, and the thing that you learn is you can't do things by yourself nope. ever in life. And the people that surround you who, who help you to motivate you, to push you, uh, and support you, that's the most important thing. You have to have that dream, though, and you can't be afraid to fail. And that's, totally. and that's really it. Because, look, I'm giving you all the good stuff. You, you know, yeah. uh, you get smacked in the face. Tell me a couple smacks in the face that you had. I mean, it sounds to me you were really blessed, well, but especially listen, early on. Because first thing, listen, first thing out of the box. I tell you about Tommy Chong, right? So here it is. This is, this is 1978. And it's Tommy Chong and I become friends because of, dude, you're sweating green, man. Right. So I started telling him, these crazy stories that used to happen to me when I was doing the Hulk yeah. at the Universal Studios tour. So he and Cheech wrote me into their next movie called Cheech and Chong's Next Movie. And the character was the amazing Wamba. And I was all red, right? But I was like a fuck up Hulk. So I smoked dope. I went through the wrong walls, helped the wrong people. I mean, the script was incredible. The, their producer at the time named Howard Brown truly called my parents in New York and said, I, I could show you, in Hollywood Reporter and also Variety, when they would list the films, upcoming films, it would say, you know, che films that are in production, Cheech and Chong's next movie, Cheech and Chong, Jake Steinfeld, right? They Curious. wrote me this incredible role. So I'm on the set for three days, and I'm having a ball. Now, the character's insane. I have a well, they kept one scene in the movie, but but uh, I'm in I'm in red paint. I'm in the black speedo, pubic hair coming out of everywhere. You know, it's Cheech and Chong, and uh, and Hilarious. there's this great producer. His name is Peter McGregor Scott, English guy with a handlebar mustache, and he and I became friends. And I'm living in Studio City, like I told you, and um, I get a call this one day, like on the fourth day. And I'm, I'm having a time in my life. I'm telling everybody, I'm going to be a star, man. I'm going to be a star. This is it. Forget it. And Petey calls me, and uh, he says, mate, I don't forget. I got good news and I got bad news. And I said, yeah, yeah, Petey, what's up? He says, uh, listen, we're going to pay you. Don't worry. I go, what does that mean? He says, look, uh, we got to cut the roll. What do you mean you got to cut the roll? He says, Jake. When the because it's Universal Studios, the Hulk is on TV right now, right. right? Universal. They said, well, when they're looking at dailies, and dailies are, you know, at the end of the day, the director, the producers, the studio looks at what was shot. Everyone is looking at you and they're not looking at Tommy and Cheech. You're 250 pounds, you're in red paint. And he oh got pubic god. hair coming out of everywhere. Oh my god! I said, "So, to, uh, Petey, tell me what to do. Do I, do I not do red? What you tell me? Uh, I'll stand on the back, Nate. It's just the way it is." And that moment was, I said, "I'm not gonna let. I'm not gonna be a person who sits by a phone or someone tells me, I'm done, right? Right. And I said, I'm gonna make. I've got to make my own way. It might not work. It might not work all the time, but if anyone's gonna, if, you know." If anyone's going to fail at it, I'll, let me fail on my own. Right. Like I tell people, I don't want to be the guy sitting next to you taking me off the cliff. Yeah. I'd much rather Drive press yourself. down man, exactly. and hit the gas and go 110 on, you know, my way. Right. Uh, so you'd be the destiny. You, you basically control your destiny that yeah. way versus having some Yahoo tell you what's what. It isn't even yeah. Yahoo. It's someone who has the thing you learn, too. It's, yeah. it's or like, no, it, but it's it, someone it, it, else. Like if you're casting for something and you want something, you have somebody in your Other mind. Other people are making the decision for, right. based about on, you. about me. Yes. About you. Who says, by the way, it's got nothing to do yeah, it's with arbitrary. you as a human. Yeah, it's arbitrary. And that, but it takes time to understand that and learn that. So when people watch this, I hope they hear the words that it isn't them. You know, today we, everybody with mental health and the challenges of people, and this is why exercise is such an important thing, no matter how depressed you are or mm -hmm. how, much, how, how much anxiety you have, get outside and exercise, do something, do a push-up, do a sit-up. It's the best antidepressant in the world. And it's been proven, by the way, and to it's be been better proven. than an antidepressant. It, a, a, absolutely, and yeah. it's something that, you know, my feeling is this, I, I've always been this upward spiral, right? This upward spiral of success. And how do you just keep parlaying, you know, as I did the famous by association into videos and books and television shows. And 
I had a dream to create a television network. I never had the background to do that. But I said, I'm going to do this because of the people that I knew. Yeah. I saw what they did. They made magic out of nothing, right? They just said, and my note to everyone here is just believe, right? If you believe you're going to achieve in your mind, put the flag in the sand, say you're going to do it, don't back down. If you really believe, if you really believe you got to persevere because you're going to hit a thousand potholes out of 822. 100%. Right? But you got lucky. And I said, the opportunity, I know what, you know, luck is when you make your own opportunities, but you moved to LA, you got lucky with the people that you got to train. Like most people don't get the right opportunity. Place, right, but right Jennifer, place, right 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 place, If I decided all of a sudden the first person that came to me was a professor from Northridge or <laughs> Santa Barbara, I probably obviously might not be sitting here talking to you but today. But maybe you would have created an entire Something curriculum on, on exercise and who knows, that would have taken you. Maybe I would have been a professor of linguistics. Maybe, or, <laughs> or like some kind of physiology that no one's have heard of who or knows, something. right? But my, that was my question. Like, were you the person, like, did you have the wherewithal to be like, okay, I'm sitting here, I have Steven Spielberg as a client, I have Harrison Ford, I have this and this. Were you like thinking always of how to leverage those relationships into a way that can be beneficial? Were you like, hey, wouldn't it be cool if I if I created Fit TV? And then did you get like, did he help you? Did he introduce you? Or like even the the Ted Turner CNN thing when you did those pieces? Well, the Ted Turner thing is a perfect example. Yeah. I mean, who got you but, to that but, place? Uh, did uh, you think simple. about it? No, or? I had no, I had no no idea that here's here's the thing. Let me just kind of break the question now. It's a good one. Yeah. It was never about, to me, it was these guys, I said, hey, I'm going to do a book. Would you mind, H, being in the book with me? No problem, Jake. Right. So you you're, know, you're already thinking about things. Well, I was thinking about it because they were pushing me to do things. Right. And I was watching them do their things. It's like, wait a second, man. I, yeah, how about me being in the movie, yeah, too? You, you exactly. know, and like so John, you already were thinking like, like oh, that. Oh, John Landis casted me in Into the Night, you know, with Jeff Goldblum and Michelle Pfeiffer. I've been, I've been in some monster movies. John Landis, who has been probably one of my, uh, not only a dearest friends, but a guy who believed in me more as an actor than as a fitness person. Really? And he was always, to this day, would say, What's wrong with you? Why did you ever stay with that fitness thing? You could have really done. A, you could have been a really good actor. I mean, and he put his he put his money where his mouth is. I mean, now they weren't huge roles, but he cast me in Into the Night. I did an episode. Remember Dream On on uh, HBO oh was God, one of the first. Yeah. You know, a great a great role uh, opposite Donna Mills, a great Donna Mills. Oh my uh, God, Donna from Knott's Landing. Yeah. I used to I used to be fr very friendly with her. Did I just, you ever talk I just, to I her? just saw I just literally just saw her at uh, Freeze. The art festival. Really? Yeah. Is she still married to? Uh, I don't don't know. I saw her. Oh, she's boy, awesome. She's, uh, very she's nice. dynamite. But I was in coming to America. You, you know, you were. I, I was a cab driver and coming to America. Oh my god! Yes, I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which no matter where I go around the world, people remember recite my that? lines. That's what it's amazing. What was the I mean, line? It really, well, it's a whole bunch of lines, but one of them is a you know. When remember. when I'm at Kennedy Airport and Eddie Murphy comes out and says stop and I uh, come, jump out of the car, you dumb fuck! <laughs> you oh my god, that was you? Yeah, that's me. Yeah, that's me. And then I take them to Queens. Oh my god, I do remember this. You know, and yeah. I was with there. We were there for a week and a half shooting that. Uh, but but John has been a great supporter and a great friend of mine. Uh, Spielberg too. I mean, look, they gave me the opportunity. I was in um, Money Pit. Um, you were? Yeah, I was the head painter in the house in Money Pit. Uh, but like with Tom Hanks and Shelley Long, I was in a movie called Tough Guys with Burt Lancaster and Kurt Douglas. I mean, they cast you, you know, in all these movies? Yeah. And I'm, you didn't want to be an actor? I did. I know what it, it was really, I was having fun doing that. So what happened? And, and then I started the fitness stuff, just it happened so, more. Yeah. And then I, I, I did. So what started to happen was this I'm training people, um, acting. You know, I'm getting a lot of notoriety, people, magazines. And remember, this is way before social media, right. Jennifer. This is 1980, Were there 81. any other personal trainers back no, then? No, there was nobody. Because Gunnar Peterson's around your age. Well, Gunnar is Gunner's way after me. I, I, I mentored Gunnar. Really? Because yeah. you're not that much older than him. I'm sure I'm not. 
but he he came in. He's a really good dude. He's he, doing gangbusters now. He's he, doing well, yeah, yeah. But he was really not, good guy. So who was around when you were around? Nobody was there anybody? Was around. There was nobody when I I was the first one to do personal fitness training, and I made it an occupation, and it was just that simple. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Who? Okay. Uh, before, okay. Uh, before we move on to the next phase. Okay. Who else did you train? John Landis, Steven Spielberg, Bat Midler. Who else? Well, I trained Hef. I trained you, Hef. Yeah, I, I mean, I, well, the whole moment was I'm living in Westwood on Veteran, yes. and the People Magazine article had just come out, and on my entry machine was a voicemail from Ted Turner. I named Ted Turner. We said, please call. I saw this article on you in People Magazine. I'd like to talk to you about a fitness show, and I thought. I don't know who this guy is. And he said he has a, he has a uh, cable network called Cable News Network. Now, in 1981, oh, yeah. Westwood didn't have cable. So there was no cable. I don't know what cable was, right? Yeah, like, you got to remember. So wasn't where, CNN it, was no, it was called Cable News Network, yes. right? So I'm literally, once again, life's about moments. I'm on my way to the Playboy Mansion. I'm training Hef and, uh, and his girlfriend at the time. And I had just mentioned, you know, Ted Turner. He goes, of course, I you know Ted Turner. He said, I said, he's a, wants me to do a fitness show. Uh, I said, you know, and I'm thinking to myself, listen, I don't want to become Jake LaLanne. That, that was a yeah. thing in my mind. Jack because, LaLanne, because, isn't that? But, and Jack is great. But, you know, it was great. The terrific guy became a great friend of mine, too. And he was, you know, his, the fitness guy that he did in the 50s and 60s on television. Yeah. Uh, and an awesome, great, incredible sense of humor. And his wife, Elaine LaLanne, who's still alive today, Terrific. She's Elaine got, Lalane is her name. Elaine Lalane, yeah, and she's really? she's dynamite. Uh, but Jack was awesome, and uh, we had some we had some great fun. And I'll tell you a funny story. You talk about stuff that didn't work out. Okay. Um, but uh, you know, I said to Hef, I said, um, "Hey, you know, I got an idea. What if what if I did like a commercial, you know, on this cable news network thing, that he would pay for that would promote me." He goes, uh, what are you thinking about? I said, I don't know. I would do like a, like a fitness break, you know, a uh, fitness break by Jake. And could I use 12 Playmates is what I said. And I, he said, yeah, sure. I said, okay. Then I asked Spielberg, because he had a house on Broad Beach in Malibu, can I use the beach? He said, sure. Remember, this is 1981. This is not, you know, the time was, it was an amazing moment yeah, in this town. Yeah, totally, yeah. Everybody was, the the... The freeness, the entrepreneur world was just popping. So not, yeah. And I was in the middle of it with these people, right? And they took me in. And Ted Turner gave me $30,000 to do 200 one-minute vignettes that went something like this. Hey, I'm Jake, a body by Jake. Uh, and here's your fitness tip of the day. Today, we're going to work the old Battissimo. I gave nicknames to the, to the yeah. you know, Abadabas, Battissimo. And here is Jennifer and Melinda, and they're going to help us along with the exercise. And they have a broomstick. Grab your broomstick. We're going to do 10 lunges. One, two. It's a beautiful day here in Malibu. Uh, remember, stick to the fight when your heart is hit. It's when things seem worse that you must not quit. Don't quit. See you tomorrow. And that was the bit. And You did 30 of these. 200 of those. Oh, oh for 30,000. Right, exactly. Okay. We shot it in three days. We shot everything in three days. And, uh, and that's before an iPhone. Yeah, remember, we, we got to set the, set the table. Now, unbeknownst to me, they ran about three times a day here in the States, right? But they ran about 10 or 12, 15 times every hour around the world because Ted didn't have any, you know, there was no programming around the world. So, I don't know, uh, you're, I'm older, but, you know, in the early days of Cable News Network, there was a weatherman named Flip Spiceland who would throw it, throw to the, to the Jake theme music. And I have letters that are framed. Craig is here. One of my assistants been with me for a long time. From the Reagan White House saying, here at Casablanca, which is what they called the White House back then, when the Jake theme song comes on, everybody here stops to see what exercise Jake is doing and to see his, his, uh, his guests, which were the playmates. Were, they, <laughs> were the playmates in every, yeah. two, of all 200 of them? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, okay. sometimes two, sometimes one. But, uh, yeah, it was great. Now, it, was, it was incredible. So, cut to, now it's, they're getting ready to do Temple of Doom or, or uh, uh, Raiders, and I'm with Spielberg and Bob Zemeckis, right? Bob Zemeckis hadn't been a big star yet, right? Okay. And, you know, the big director, yep. right? We're at Heathrow Airport, and uh, 
we're, we just got off the plane, and these people start, like, coming over to us. And I said to Wheels, I said, don't worry, I'll, I'll take care of this. If they're going to rush him, you know. And these people come up, they go, right, mate, I want you to keep fit, man. Like this. And I said, hey, how you doing? You know? And I said, and this is my friend. You? I said, this is my friend Wheels, and it's Bob, you know? <laughs> It was, it, you, was great, uh, it was it was a great it was it was it was a great it was a a classic a classic moment amazing it was a classic moment that's hilarious yeah. okay and so then what happened what's phase two now I well, can't well, believe we're only in phase two no but the fa the phase two was you, you know well, after I kind of stopped uh, so fit TV so basically I did um, in 1989 um, this is a lot longer but uh, I'm going to condense it I did a sitcom called Big Brother Jake you did? on the Family Channel. Yeah, with Tim and Pat Robertson. Okay, so, so you did get a TV show. Oh, yeah. That no, wasn't even fitness. My, no, no, no. It was a half-hour sitcom that, that, that with Tim Robertson, who is dynamite. Um, but, he and I became great friends. We shot the show, and I lived in Virginia Beach in Virginia. My daughter Morgan was born, uh, Tracy, my wife. Uh, our daughter was born in Norfolk, Virginia. Uh, wow. Yeah, and we did a hundred episodes of Big Brother Jake and Tim Robertson, who um, a lot of episodes. Re re yeah, we did five years. Uh, we did five years of the show. It was incredible. I fought because I wanted to do the show in L.A. And the best thing that never happened was not was 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 was, was to to do the show in VB to be Why? able to do the show because I was able to continue everything. I would be able to focus. I remember I had to memorize a script which I hadn't really done before, right? My fitness shows, I have teleprompter. I mean, you know. Wait, and, wait, you and, didn't have fitness shows yet, did you? Oh, yeah. No, you I was doing, I did, I did okay, my then, show. First, I did the fitness, the fitness break by Jake. Yeah, with Ted, then what happened? Right? Then I did a show in first run syndication with Samuel Goldwyn Jr., right? Well, with tele Body by Jake. That was a bye bye Jake. Okay, I, and that was I did was 100 great. episodes of that that ran all over the country. Okay, but wait. So you were, okay, so you stopped 1988-ish training people. You're like, I'm not doing this anymore. Right, but 87, I did the, 87, I did the uh, syndicated show. 87, 88, 89, I did the syndicated show. Of Body by Body Jake. Body by Jake. Before, but was that after the vignettes? After the vignettes. Yes. After the vignettes, and then... I moved over to ESPN, right? Uh, okay. Because Steve Bornstein, the great Steve Bornstein, a media genius, uh, who not only you know really shaped ESPN and Sports Center, but launched the NFL Network, reached out to me saying, "Hey, we want to make you an offer. You can't refuse. Would you come over?" Because my audience was basically women, and they wanted to bring more women to ESPN, right? And they had a fitness block on ESPN, so I did that for. Uh, my goodness, uh, for, I, I did about 350 episodes of Body by Jake on ESPN. And what did you do on the show? What was the show, really? My show was everything. I tried to do everything but fitness, right? I did cooking. I did cold opens where, like, Saturday Night Live. Yeah. Like, I would have celebrities come on. I have Don King, whoever. So I, I uh, shot a season in Vegas, right? Okay. Steve Wynn became a friend of mine. And we were at the Mirage, the Mirage, right? The Mirage. It was at the Mirage where they had just literally just opened the hotel. And Cirque, they had a tent for Cirque du Soleil. Steve erected a tent for me. And I had everybody, I mean, I had Marla Maples. Donald was yeah. off camera, right? Uh, Don King, Tommy Lasorda, Raleigh Messamino, Steve Sachs, the, all the people from Cirque du Soleil would come on. And we would do a cult, Barbara Eden. You know, um, Tony and do what? Danza. What were you doing? We would do a cold open where I would play Tony's role in Who's the Boss, and he would be me. As a cold open, we throw the commercial. He'd come on and make a salad, and we talk. Make a uh, salad. You know, and then I'd have we 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 would do motivation, inspiration. We had three and a half minutes of exercise, of actual like an exercise spot, because my thing was more about motivation and inspiration, yeah, and about mental. If you think about it today, mental wellness. One hundred. You know what's so you know? funny? This is why it's like so funny how things gonna get repackaged differently. But right. it's, but the the core is always the same. Like the basics. Like it's not fitness isn't about the squat or the lunge. It's about what it does for your head and your mental acuteness, yeah. your cognitive ability, just, your confidence, all these other things. It's just how it's presented. It's all how it's packaged. It, it, it's all how it's packaged and presented. It really is. And for me. I loved 
to make people smile. I, that's what I do. Yeah. That's my life. I mean, I I like to make people happy. You're good at it too. You know? Well, no, you have you. your personality. <laughs> It's like you're like a perfect person to be body by Jake. Like now it all makes sense to me. You know what I mean? No, it's true. But like, but you also are very entrepreneur. Like, like the entrepreneurial spirit of you is obviously very ingrained, right? Like, yeah. So you always had that? No, it just happened. I mean, I, I, my feeling was my life when I came to LA and I said, if I could be on the cover of a magazine, that's it. it. I'm going home. I'm a winner. Yeah. And when that happened, what magazine? I said, oh gosh, it was, uh, oh my, I don't even remember now. It's a, it was a muscle and fitness. No, oh, no, I was never on the cover of that. No, 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 never made that one. Uh, it was something else. It was something that was a big oversized, like, like a, uh, look at a newspaper magazine. It was one of those. Oh, like a LA weekly or something. Not an LA week, something like that, but sports, something sports, like sports style. It was called sports style. It was sports called, style. who knows? Okay. And I saw myself on it and I said, okay, how can I parlay this to the next thing? And I knew right there, right. That's when the, that's when, that's when things started to click for me. And do you still, by the way, talk to all the same people? Do you still talk to Steven Spielberg, Harrison yeah. Ford? Are you kidding me? All, all the these time. people? Yes. Are you still it's like friends with them? I'm friends with them. Yeah. Awesome. And so, okay. So then how did Fit TV happen? Fit TV happened. I'm doing the sitcom. Okay. In Virginia. In Virginia. Called Big Brother Jake. Okay. Tim Robertson and Pat Robertson. Pat Robertson, the 700 Club, the evangelical preacher, mm -hmm. right? Um, became incredible friends of mine and great supporters of mine. And... Um, they were expanding their family channel business. And I went to them because they gave me a great opportunity to do my sitcom. And I said, listen, I have this idea to launch a 24-hour fitness television network, right? And What year I, are we talking now? This is 90, this is 95. Okay. This is, so no, I'm sorry, 90, 93. I started with it. 93. 93. Okay. So by this point, of course, Jane Fonda is out. Denise oh, Oz, Jane's all doing that. these people now, have been you out know, for a while. I'll, I'll tell you this now because we could talk about it again, but I trained Jane, right? Oh, wow, and, yeah. And, and we had and have a great relationship, a great relationship, and she was awesome. But, but like anything, we were never supposed to talk about it, but I saw her on a plane, and, I, and she says, you, you could talk about the fact that you trained me, Jake. And I said, okay. okay. Every time I remember, I'm going to mention yeah, it I'll like that. Exactly. You know? But she's awesome. Jane has been dynamite and uh, just just a great person. But also, she became a fitness person through by accident, too. Like, she was... Yes, but you yeah. know what, though? But she was real. She was sincere about it. She was really sincere about it, right? And, and I don't know and, and what I don't remember. No, nah, but what she did was great and inspired lots of people. Richard yeah. Simmons, the, the same thing. Richard and I have been great friends for a long time. I'll tell you a great story there, but because uh, it happens with all of us. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, that's so, what I say. He was so, there. He was around in your time, in your yeah, era. Yeah, sure. But remember, we all did different things, different, man. Yeah. And that's what I mean by there's plenty of room for everybody to be successful. Exactly. My audience wasn't Richard's audience. It wasn't Jane's audience. It wasn't, you know, Why? Well, who's Kathy your Smith or whatever it might be. I'm just saying. It, it, no, who it, was it, your audience back then? Women who were? My it was, you know, my audience was the, the people who had a hard time just getting started. Yeah, you said, and, okay. that, and that was my audience, okay, you know. Fair. And because of... And look, all the different things that I've done, it just it, it added people to it. So what okay, so what was the story with Richard Simmons? So I'll tell you this. So so the sitcom, I'm doing Big Brother Jake, okay. and I go to the Robertsons, I say, I have this idea. Look, my 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 life is fitness, right? That's what I do. The sitcom, it was great for me and it worked out really well for the family channel. I said, um, I want to launch this twenty four hour fitness television network. Now, if you remember, Ted Turner had something called headline news. Yeah, now, remember. headline news used to be a wheel. It was an hour wheel that was local news or world news, and it was broken up into slices. Okay. Now, if I was going to program a 24-hour fitness television network, I couldn't just program fitness shows. By the way, you'd murder yourself watching that. That's, yeah. uh, the ESPN block was murderous to watch. Yeah. I mean, if you looked at the ratings there, it was, it went, it was all, all over the place. That's what said to me, I need to do something different. I'm getting lost in this block of fitness shows. Yeah. It doesn't mean anything. So I looked at headline news and I said, ah, this is the way to do it. 
So, you know, I said I talked to Ted once again, who became a mentor to me. Wow. And all these guys. I mean, they became mentors and friends. I could ask them, the late great Steve Ross, who put time and Warner together. I met through Wheels, right? Who was one of the greatest entrepreneurs of all time. I used to sit with him at the Bel Air Hotel in his bungalow and he would tell me stories. I love it. You know? Yeah. And I would just would just sit with him. I mean, look, up until this last minute, Burt Backrack, who just passed away. Yeah. Uh, at the time, was married to Carol Burr Sager a long time ago. I used to train Carol, and Bert was a friend. Bert and his wife Jane are dear friends of ours, and I used to sit with Bert at the end, you know, and he and I would just ask him, tell me stories. And he would tell me stories about Fire Island and things like that, and him starting out in the music business. And I mean, stuff that, you know, you sit there saying, boy, I'd love to tape this, but you go, my God, I can't. It's, yeah. It was just beautiful. It's just, and, and I've been afforded that opportunity with these people. Totally. So with Tim and Pat, I sat with them and I said, here's the idea. This is, this is real. So they said, look, we'll incubate your network on the Family Channel from 6 to 8 in the morning. Right? It'll give me a two-hour block. But I had to go out, and it was called the hunting license, and go build subscribership. Right. So I grew Fit TV to uh, 28 million homes. And uh, I sold it to Rupert Murdoch. And it was an incredible moment for me in my life. And then uh, from there, my... Well, I, wait, wait. You sold it? Like, so you grew it to 28? How did, how did you do it? Huh. I went to all the cable providers, you know? Guys like Jimmy Dolan from Cablevision, who owns Madison Square Garden. Uh, Leo Hendry and the guys, John Malone at the time, TCI. Uh, Ralph Roberts, Brian Roberts, Comcast. At the time, Comcast was like the number nine family. You, you know, now they're wow. number one. Uh, Did you make all the calls? You cold called no. these people? What did you do? I went. There was no calling. Right. I, so I got make... on a plane. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you, 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 got, you basically yeah. uh, now, scheduled I had, meetings? I had the relationship with the Robertsons, who basically were very helpful for me to guide me to where I, got, where I have to go. Right. They said you should call this person, call that yeah. person. Go there, and I went and sat with them, and... Uh, you know, Amos Hofstetter, you know, the guys uh, all, from all different cable operators. Right. And I would... Uh, and you grew it to 28 million. 28 million homes, yeah. And then, and then so th so then did you call up, fo like, fo like, who called who? Like, no, I want to know. It was, it, was a, it was a great moment, you know. They, they made a deal with us and... Uh, Were they your partners? So no, much they weren't my partners. No, no, no. How much did you own a Fit TV at the time? Oh, I, I, I own a nice little piece, you know. Like 50%? Yeah. No, gosh, no. But enough 20%? to where... 20%? I don't know. The Robertsons you know? don't have much of it. Like oh, it, it was. It, well, let's put it this way: it was incredible. It, it, it was a great moment in my life that when I because I still can't add. And when I was going like this, it still was going. You know what I mean? But how but much it did you sell it for? Uh, it for a half a billion dollars. A half a billion to yeah. Fox. And so, but of the fit when you made this deal with these two guys, yeah, Pat and the other guy. How yeah. much of the Fit TV did you own? They own. Uh, it, they it own was, the majority. It, listen, yes, exactly. Okay. And uh, all I can tell you is that when when I sold it, my dream, my I, basketball was my first love, right? And I wanted to buy an NBA team, so that that oh, was something wow. that I really wanted to do. Got it. Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. And at the time in Hollywood, everybody was buying minor league baseball teams. So this was 1998, right? This is 98, 97, 98, and um, so simultaneously. I sell fit and I launch because now on demand is becoming a big thing in cable. Remember those set top boxes yep. that you would put on top? So I went to two of the people that I sold exercise my whole idea of fit TV to Comcast and Time Warner as please would you put us on to be my partners in this new venture called On Demand. Wow. So yep. we launched something called Exercise TV, which was the first on demand fitness television network. For fitness. Um, and during that time, I, I love basketball and trying to figure out, okay, well, who do I go to? And there's nobody in town that I could really talk to, mentor me on that. And I was doing a short-lived magazine. This is a, this is a kick-ass story. How much more time we have left on this? I know. How so, long have we been going? Oh, my God. <laughs> if, Jake, this is going to be a twenty-minute episode. No, 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 no. This is not going to be a twenty-minute episode. So, so it, but this I is, might break it up into part two parts. So, so, but this is this is this is a cool one. So, um, I'm doing a short-lived magazine okay. called Body by Jake. It's 1997, 
Okay. Um, with a company called Hachette Filipaki. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, right? And the publisher is a terrific guy named David Pecker, right. who is in the news today, unfortunately, or fortunately, whatever. He's always been a great guy. was a great guy to me. Hachette and, did my and, book, I told you about. And, yeah. And, uh, yeah. And, and, uh, and we have six weeks to go. Before the first issue comes out, I have zero advertisers. I mean, I'm not kidding. Now. It's not like I have one or two. Jennifer, I have zero. I have nothing. And I used to do a thing called dialing for dollars, I call it, right? Remember, this is way before the internet, way before social media, iPhones. I used to read every magazine, you know, advertising age, ad week. If I recognize a name, I circle. If I didn't recognize a name, I'd circle it and just call, right? Yeah, yeah. What's the worst that happens? They tell you, fuck off, and yeah. you, or they just hang up the phone, right? Right. You're no, you're no worse off than you were before. Hey, listen. Uh, like I said to you, no is halfway to yes. Yes, exactly. Right? <laughs> it's half. We're just getting started. We, we, we're just getting started. Exactly. Because you know why? You have to believe. If you don't believe in what you're doing, then if someone tells you no, you go, okay, and you leave. As opposed to, I'm telling you, I believe in this. I'm going to keep going until I get that yes. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. Mm -hmm. So I see this guy's name in advertising age, who now has become the CMO at Ford. I go, oh my God, I know this guy. He used to be at Reebok. So I call him up. And I said, Dave, what are you doing? It's Jay. He goes, oh my God, Jake, it's great to hear from you. I said, buddy, congratulations. He goes, thanks a million. I said, listen, I got this new magazine and uh, it's coming out in six weeks. And I was, I was a good guy to this guy. And he was always nice to me. I said, I need five pages. He says, Jake, I just got here a week ago. I said, that's why I didn't ask you for 10 pages. <laughs> you know? He goes, that's I can't, a great one. I can't do it. I could do it maybe a couple of months. I go, I don't have a couple of months. I'm out of business in a couple of months. He says, I, I can't do it. I said, okay, how about I deliver John Kennedy Jr.? He goes, what? I said, yeah. I, I, if I bring John Kennedy Jr. to Detroit, he goes, wait, you'll bring John Kennedy Jr. To, Tro to, to, to my place here in Detroit? I go, that's what I said. He goes, all right. If you, now, he was doing a magazine called George. Yeah, I remember. Right? And I also said, as I was just spitting out, I said, and I could bring Ralph Lauren's son, David, who at the time was probably 20 years old, who was doing a custom pub job called Swing Magazine. Okay. It was a magazine where kids were doing in their 20s. He goes, uh, look, you know, John Kennedy Jr., you bring to Detroit, you get him to Detroit, I'll find a couple of pages for you. I go, done. I hang up the phone. I had never met John, right? You haven't? No, I hadn't met John, right? I called David Pecker, and I tell him the story. I said, listen, could you introduce me to, could you introduce me to John? <laughs> what made you even say him of all people? Well, at the time, John Kennedy well, that's Jr. Like, why it's Hachette. It, it was I, the well, biggest the same, name in the world. Well, it's, but, but it's the same publisher. He's with my publisher, exactly. right? You he, might and as I well. are, he and I are partners. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know it yet. <laughs> He, he doesn't have any idea what partners. Right. And David says, come to New York, and I'll introduce you. So I flew to New York. We hung out for a couple of days. He was incredible. We all got on a plane, flew to Detroit. You got him? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We got on a plane, David Pecker, myself, and John Kennedy, and David Loren, and went down, and I got some pages, and John Kennedy was a... Listen, I've been around a lot of famous people, man, in my yeah. life. And uh, this guy was above that, man. It was, uh, people were just mesmerized. mesmerized. And he was really a sensational By guy. the way, I'm still, even now, I'm mesmerized by you even talking. No, it was just a sensational. Why? People were so I don't know what it was. The I guess it, it was just the royalty stature of him. He but was beautiful. And he had like some type of like, like it was just a charisma. Is it there, aura? There was like a, was just an aura. An, a charisma about yeah, him. It's the truth. And he yeah. but he was so down to earth and such a great guy. Yes. And David Lauren, who was a kid at the time, now runs his dad's business, who is is just an incredible. Oh, he does. David would, Lauren is yeah. oh my God. What he's been able to do with his father's company with 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 Polo, with Ralph Lauren really? I didn't is know amazing. That. amazing. He's a genius. The kid the, the, now he's a man. I can't say yeah, a kid. Exactly. He, he's not a kid anymore. He's a, he's a genius. Anyway, so on the plane ride home. Right? Uh, those guys go back privately. I said, uh, flying dirty, yeah. going back commercial. <laughs> and uh, we each switched magazines. I, obviously, I knew George, but I didn't know about Swing. So I'm opening up Swing Magazine. Remember, I just sold Fit TV. I have this dream to become, I want to own an NBA. I want, I want to buy an NBA team. Yeah. And I opened this article, a guy holding a lacrosse stick. And I said, oh, you know, I played lacrosse in high school. And uh, I'm reading this story about this guy named Dave Morrow, who grew up in Detroit, um, was a hockey player, a teacher, got him 
play in lacrosse. He ended up going to Princeton, won a national title there. But what intrigued me was that he started this company in his dorm room called Warrior. So, and, and it was like, this guy's making lacrosse a lifestyle. I said, he's on to something. I said, let me call him. So I got home. I called David Lauren. And I said, hey, I read the magazine. Really cool. Saw this guy. Uh, could I get the writer? I need to get a phone number. He said, sure. So I called Dave Morrow on the phone, and I asked him a simple question. Is there such a thing as pro outdoor lacrosse? And he said, no. I go, well, there is now. And that was May 1998. And he and I went on this adventure to launch the first professional outdoor lacrosse league called Major League Lacrosse. Wow. Where is it now? And we did it. We did it for 20 years. It's now assimilated into another league, and it's, uh, it continues to, to grow. But, uh, is it we, successful? It was incredibly successful. Monetarily, it was considerably, absolutely not. But the sports business, you know, is very, difficult. Is very challenging. And there was, no, there was no roadmap. There was no book you read. How do you start a professional sports league? Right. And it was the greatest adventure. We wrote a book. There's a book called Take a Shot that tells the story of how we founded Major League Lacrosse, and we're doing a documentary, the real one, because there's a new group of guys who have this new league, and they assimilated Major League Lacrosse into this thing, and they tell us a different story. Really? So, yeah, it's exciting, but it's, it's kind of fun. It's, That's uh, amazing. So it's still going on. Yeah, sure. No, absolutely. Are you inv- how much no, time do you spend? I don't spend any time anymore. No more, nothing no on more that. time. No, no, no. But there's a bunch of different things. Mostly today, a lot of things that I do, it's about giving back. I've been, we talked about this before. Yeah. Uh, well, but wait, don't even get there yet. I'm not yeah. even there yet. All right. Chronological. Okay. Then, how did you get into all the infomercials? Oh, my gosh. Because that's how, you forgot, like, the big people, well, the big like, thing, know, I know you for, I know. like. It's this, true. Wasn't this, yeah. an, it was the infomercial piece of your life, uh, a professional life, the most successful piece? Yes. Because you sold, yeah, like, well, billions TV of dollars. Yeah, well, 50V was probably, 50V was, was a, was well, a huge TV one. was huge. But, yes, the infomercial business, I had no interest in getting involved in. Because when I looked at it in 91, right? Yeah. When, when it used to be the guy with the colorful sweaters and, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. the kitchen magicians and all that stuff like that. And when someone approached me on it, I said, no, thanks. You know, here I was, I'm doing movies and television shows and my own things. Right. And I go, like, I don't I'm want not going to do infomercials. This was before Beachbody? Or was it like in the same time? Jennifer. Jennifer. Yes, tell me. It was it was it was fifteen years before Beachbody. Okay, no, Beachbody but listen, Beachbody came out with P ninety X in two thousand, right? Um it was a two thousand? I thought so. Really? That long ago. Two thousand. Maybe I'm not I'm not well, sure. Well my first information came out in ninety two. Okay, so we were we were so adv- way before that. Yeah, okay. Just, and, I'm and trying I to get done, chronological. No, here. no, I'm only kidding. But I, the of thing course is, I no, know. No, no, but the, the the whole thing is is that for me, I thought if I was gonna do this, yeah, then you know it's it has to be authentic. Totally. Right? Uh, and um, the first product we came out with. Now, I had some great people that I brought in, terrific people that uh, helped me. This wasn't an industry that I knew about, right? right? I mean, it was very new. Was it through like Gumthy Ranker or any no, of that stuff? We did no, it, we did it on our own. So oh, we, you did we it, on, did your it own. on our own. Yeah, yeah. And it's amazing. Uh, and uh, who helped it, you? It's as well, we, a, great, a great guy who was one of my partners a long time ago named Phil Scotty, who was really a bright dude. Okay. And we kind of teamed up, and he was terrific. He was really sensational. And uh, we brought in different people to do different shows with us. And for me, I looked into the camera and I just, uh, you know, I, I did what I had no idea how it was going to work. But I had this passion. Like I said, I want to help. I want to make you feel good about yourself. And if this could do it, then, th- then this is, but you have to do these exercises, right? right. If you do these exercises, I can't guarantee that you're going to get in incredible shape and you're going to feel better about yourself. And if you feel better about yourself, you're going to stand up a little bit straighter, you're going to look in that mirror, and you're going to feel proud of who you are. You're going to have that pop in your step that maybe you're going to go out and do something extra today Great. that you didn't do yesterday. And that's the essence of everything that we did, whether it was the Firm Flex, the Hip and Thigh Sculptor, the Ab and Back Plus, the Ab Scissor. The, you know, and for a string of many years, we had... How a many lot products? of success. Um, a bunch of products. How and, many would but you home, say? But home shopping, you know, I did 15 years on home shopping, and that was incredible. You know, selling, I'm sure you've, have, have you done it? 
I've done a couple of them. They were like, um, I had a pair of shoes. Do you know what's really, I was supposed to show you back when, I don't, this is so crazy. I created a pair of shoes called, uh, there were no gym, my first company was called No Gym Required. Right. And I created this shoe called the NGR shoe that had this interchangeable weighted midsole in the shoe that basically it was like a weighted shoe. Right. But it, the way it was in the shoe is that like it was easier on your joints than wearing weights, like, you know, ankle weights or whatever. Right. 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 Sat. Right. Oh, my God. I didn't think, you know, the, all the times that we've spoken recently, I didn't even remember this until just now. And I had a bunch of people w- want to introduce me to you. In fact, do you know, do you remember a girl and you were. And she became, I became friends with her later, but I, I because there was a girl who did an infomercial with you. Her name was Ashley Marriott. Do you remember her? Ashley. It's like someone saying, hey, Jake, you're from New York. You know, Mike, <laughs> Ashley. You don't know Ashley? I don't know. Oh, I, I don't know. But no, she was just a girl that was in one of your videos. A very okay. nice girl. But that's not who was going to introduce me that's to you. That's funny. I don't remember. Was it Kathy so Smith? Funny. Someone in the... Oh, I Kathy's awesome. I love Kathy. Kathy was nice. I, there was a girl, because I'm Canadian, and I moved here... And I was going well, to HSN Canada, you know, that was a they or, wanted to have my so yeah, that's I'm how sure it they was. Did it, right. So HSN Canada right, right. wanted to I moved here long story short, I sold the company to this guy who uh, owns a shoe company. But now what company was it that he, you sold? I so, it was called it was a shoe company. Right. I, I sold to this guy who owns like a bunch of shoe and businesses. And how much did you make in that? I when you're when I'm on your podcast, I'll tell you everything. I'm asking you now. Okay. I on. sold it for a, a bit, but I'll tell you what happened. The guy. What took percentage of the company of did you? I owned all of it. Did I you? created it. Yes. Wow, and you were able to hold on to everything. I did. Well, huh? it was a Good different situ- situation. I created the shoe, and I was really young. It was my first thing I ever. I never knew anything about any of this stuff. But I had a book called No Gym Required. It was my first book. In fact, actually, is it over there? Do I, oh, it's right there. Can I show it to him really fast? Over here. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer, going off, ca- going off camera now. Look here she this is. This is my first book. Let me it's see. No gym required. Look at you. Oh, this is great. Like Canadian thing. And then that was from a long time ago. You look great. That's and, awesome. Anyway, so I started this, and because of the book name and blah, 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 I created this shoe. The whole idea behind No Gym Required was that I was, to, I was creating simple ways for people to be fit and healthy without going right. to the gym. That's but awesome. Anyway, but anyway, the reason why I'm not, this is not a podcast about me. The point is I had a pair of shoes. I was supposed to give them to you. Someone wanted me to give them to you to do an infomercial. I don't remember what happened. That's funny. Yeah. That you know was what? There was, a, there, there was so, you know, during that period of That's so funny. real like, 92 to probably 2008, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, we had a, a string of uh, successful shows that that was really amazing yeah i mean uh this was older but, this was a 2010 but, i remember or something like but that. i used to see i mean we would see hundreds of products would come to the office yeah you know whether they were like a product like a shoe right. or on a napkin or, or whatever a yeah. prototype or a video or something like that and what and happened i would look at everything you would i'll tell you this i would look at everything and the probably the biggest hit that i ever had which was the ab scissor, right? Yeah, and everyone um, loves ab stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was. I looked at a video. It was this massive contraption. Yeah. And I'm about to turn it off, and the guy comes around to the side, and he goes, "And you could do your abs like this using your own body weight." And I go, "Whoa, whoa, 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 whoa. let's put that back." Yeah. And I said, "Let's get this guy on the phone." And I called him, and I said, "Look." Uh, the machine is the machine. Can you separate the ab thing yeah. from everything else? He said, I think I can. I said, well, we'll help you. And uh, that was a that was a biggest monster. Hit. Yeah, it was a monster. But, but you know what? The infomercial business is a great business. It was a great business. And hopefully it will be again. We have, I'm going to, we're getting back into it. Yeah. Um, Are you going to get yeah. back into yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have something pretty exciting. Um, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it, what's great about that business is this. It's not like the movie business or the TV business where you have to invest lots of money, like a movie. You spend $100 million and you have one yeah. weekend and it doesn't work, you're out of business. Yeah. In the infomercial business, at least back in the day, right. you would test a product. So there's a finite amount of money that you could lose. Today, right. with digital media and everything else, there's so many different things that you can try yeah. with offers, 
and things like that to see if something resonates, yeah. something works with somebody. So it is quite intriguing. It is. Um, it's a. It, it 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 was a great run. Uh, it. I mean, I I love doing home shopping as much as you know. It, it wears on you being away for, at the time we were having kids and yeah. I was being away on weekends. Uh, but being down there in Tampa, St. Pete. Yeah. Um, Where was QVC? That was a big Philly. Yeah. Philly. Did you want to be at Q- QVC? What? I started at QVC, and my guys, actually the Turner guys, uh, ended up running. Uh, HSN, yes, I remember, yeah. uh, Jerry Hogan, who was a great friend of mine and terrific man. So you went uh, there. Uh, it had me, Jake, you want to make you an offer? Would you come over? And I said, I'd love to. So they guaranteed me hours and it was beautiful. And um, it, live television, man, is the greatest because that shows, you know, it's like a comic getting up. A hundred percent. You know, later in the, the, the chronological stuff we're talking yeah. about, I had this uh, dream to do a one-man show, which I did in Las Vegas. I did one night at the MGM Grand, the Hollywood Theater, and we sold it out. You did? And How many people? Tom, Tom Jones opened up for me. He was incredible. When? Yeah. This was, man, a few years ago. Uh, and how many people showed up? 735. Filled up the uh, filled up the MGM Grand. The It was called the Hollywood Theater. That's amazing. And it, was, it was awesome. It was really, really fun. But... Live television, you're you have your fitness product here yeah, and you your go. models and there's a there's a little computer screen off to the side and it says, you know, calls on hold, calls online. This is before the internet also, before, right? Yeah. And dollars per minute you were doing. So you would look and see. When it was working, it was great. When it wasn't, you thought there was a power outage somewhere. Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> That's right. But it happens, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it and doesn't sometimes work. Sometimes it doesn't. So did you own a piece of every uh, product yeah. that was yeah, coming yeah. out? Like, yeah, it all depends on the deal you, you make, make with make these a guys. Deal. Sure. But when you were at HSN, though, was it really, were you more of a spokesperson? or no, were you it was more, my, it was it was my all product, your, only you, my product. And you brought them the my stuff. Product. yeah. yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. you would sign deals, like, let's say, for example, I did give you these shoes, you and I would make a deal, then you would go on, you would go on I HSN. Prob- I, I, I wouldn't do it, I'd have you do it, Right. Oh, but it was still under your oh, name. Oh, 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 if, back in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, then it, yeah, exactly. So and I so, would do That's it. what right. I mean. Right. And so that, that was like a, so was that the most, the, in that, the product piece of your, of your professional life, yeah. was that the most lucrative or was it still the Fit TV the most lucrative? Or there were both? I would say both. Both I would really... say both. They were great. It's a, uh, it was very blessed. It was incredible. It was a great moment. Yeah, those those were great moments. You've had such an amazing yeah, career. It's yeah. unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can, and I'm sorry, we're going for so long, but then let's go into the pro. Like you have this new product. Well, yeah. So, but but through all this time, you, you know, um, a big part of what I've been doing is giving back, and I think that's a really important thing you have to do. And for me, my passion is kids. I mean, I love. I have four kids, and my daughter Morgan, uh, Nick, Zach, and Luke. They're grown-ups now. My youngest guy is a senior at USC, uh, going to graduate in May. Wow. So unbelievable. My daughter Morgan's 30. Uh, Nick is 28. Zach's 23. Lukey's 21. So, you know, but kids, have, I, I, I've, I've always, you know, I always want to see how can we make this next generation better? Give, yeah. this, give them something that, that to, to empower them. And fitness was for me. So my belief is, I've always said I wanted to put a fitness center in every elementary and middle school in this great country of ours. And, uh, I love that. And uh, as I said earlier in the conversation, Arnold, when he was governor, named me chair of the fitness council here in California. I served for him uh, during his administration, then a year with Jerry Brown, and, and then uh, became the chair of the National Foundation for Governors Fitness Councils. And uh, I've been in this position, this is my 10th year. Um, and I have a simple mission here, is to literally put as many fitness centers, uh, don't quit fitness centers in elementary and middle schools around the country. Um, each year I choose four states. Uh, I call Governor's Cold. I've got three brand new $100,000 don't quit fitness centers as a gift to gift to your state, Governor Jennifer. Wow. You just have to pick up the phone. And um, it's been great. And this year uh, we're doing um, Iowa, uh, Montana, uh, Wyoming and Vermont, and that puts us at 46 states. And next year we'll be, we get to 50. I said 50. I hang it up. And uh, that's amazing. Coca-Cola has been a partner of mine since the beginning. Um, Nike has been a partner of mine since the beginning, and Anthem has been a partner of mine. And wheels up uh, through their iterations. That they're great. Uh, this terrific guy, Kenny Dichter, uh, wow. who had a company called Marquee Jet, sold it to Warren Buffett, 
and then started Wheels Up, which is a public company. Uh, they, wow. he, he does it private after. They're part, he's a partner of yours with this? Yes. Oh, I didn't yeah, know Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've been great because we go to places where no one goes to, and it's hard yeah. to get to these places, so we've been able to. He oh, flies right. us to these places, which has been, which has been great. And uh, the greatest thing in the world is you go to a school where there's not a fitness center in 30, 40, 50 miles around, and this fitness center becomes the hub of the community. And so, as I said, you know, not just for the kids and the teachers, but the moms and dads, grandmas and grandpas and aunts and uncles get a so chance important. to exercise, too. And it becomes a community thing. And uh, we have found that test scores are up, gang violence down, teenage pregnancy down, uh, this upward spiral of success. And kids are in school. They're less fidgety. They're, le they're more focused. They're more focused. They do better on their tests. They do better on their tests. They're proud of themselves. Their teachers are proud of them. Their parents are proud of them. As I said, this upward spiral yeah. of, you know, I can believe in myself. I All love from that. doing a push up and a sit up and a pull down and a bicep curl. Can you believe that? Right, it's Jennifer? A, it's 100%. I love how you, you, you're so good. You keep on saying my name. It's like so, it's so endearing. Because you're like you say the person's name. Margaret? No, but call? like when someone says your name, it's like oh. a, it's like from How to Win Friends oh, and Influence yeah. People. Have you read the Dale Carnegie book? No, to always but, repeat someone's name because it oh, makes them true? feel really? yeah, it makes wow. them feel much more uh, endeared by you and close to you. So when if I said to you, Jake, please continue, Jake. Jake, you know what's really funny, Jake? How you say this, Jake, <laughs> versus me not saying your name at all. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, you ever heard that? See, no, that's great. Oh, see, Jake, and I've been doing that for so long, been Jennifer. Doing, that's been your that's been your like secret sauce, <laughs> that's Jake. Been, that's my rapido, yes. Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so wait, I have one more thing to say. I mean, God, okay, don't quit your drink. Uh, what deal did you make today? Because you had to oh, switch well, around. What, what we did. So, you know. Um, oh, we could talk about so, some other time. So, it's been like so, five no, hours No, 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 uh, <laughs> but so, so here's the thing. Um, I, you know, I've invested in lots of different things. Some work, some doesn't work, yeah, you know. One, one great fitness story. I, I want to give you this because that's yeah. as interesting as. Uh, I wouldn't so, even ask what you do for fitness. So. Well, you. when I train, I'm up at 4.30 in the morning, and I have a gym in my house, and I do a 42-minute workout. I still, I still, my old school, you know, Not Monday. No, 42. Oh, okay. Monday and Thursday, chest and tries. Tuesday, Friday, back and buys. Wednesday, Saturday, uh, I do cardio. I stop training my legs, you know. You do? Just, you do splits, though. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, but I've been doing it for a long time. Right. I, still, I still throw a lot of iron around. That's, you do? That's my thing. Yeah, and I know. And you do cardio though now. I do my cardio, but I always do cardio. I, I, I but my Wednesday, Saturday is a bigger cardio day where I'll do treadmill, uh, recumbi, and I'll do um, for how like, long? Like a spinning bike, forty-five minutes. So you do cardio for forty-five minutes on those two days. But no, I'll kind of split it up. So okay, so give me. I want to know. Basically, I do. So basically, it's this. It's uh. You can't I, leave I, without I do, telling me I this. I do hundred rep sets. So I'll start out with seven minutes on a treadmill, right? Okay. And then I'll jump off and I'll do my abs, right? For seven minutes. For I'll do seven hundred reps there, and then I'll seven hundred seven seven hundred reps. So I I'll do three different three or four different movements, right, to get to seven hundred reps. Okay. And then I'm back on the treadmill for seven minutes, uh, and then I do a body part. So I do my chest, and I'll do a chest press for a hundred reps, a bench for a hundred reps. A hundred reps. Yeah. So are you doing so it do straight it, up, I, so or are you I do stopping, it. or no, 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 I don't stop. No, no, there's no stopping. So how much so weight can you be doing? I'm doing. I do 80 pound dumbbells when I'm doing. Uh, uh, you can do 100 of this. Yeah, but remember the way I do it is I don't lock out. So I'm not locking out. I'm I'm doing here. So the muscles oh. engage, right? Okay. And if I'm doing a bicep curl, I'm here. I'm not. You know, all if, the way. Because if you think if you're here, the muscles. Elongated, not well, elongated, like but it's not, but but it's not completely engaged. Right. And if it's up here, you're at rest. So I take that out and this out, and I'm here, right? And you're doing a hundred of those. Yeah. What kind of bicep are you? Can you what kind of weight can you do for your bicep? Uh, you know, I'm on a machine, or or I'm doing 40, 50 pound dumbbells. Okay, and then chest, you could do eighty, just like that. Yeah, shoulders, back, triceps. You're not doing lunges or squats anymore. Nah. Why? You know, my my thighs always got big. And they looked a little goofy in pants. My calves never grew, so <laughs> that's like, why you wanted listen, to ask Arnold that that's question. What, that's why. Yeah. So listen, I never. My calves never grew. <laughs> what what I did, I used the tiniest calves in the world. 
I'd show you in a second, but now oh, I you, see. They actually I can disappear. actually see through your pants yeah. that they're small. Yeah. <laughs> they are. They're small. They definitely saw. Thanks, Jennifer. Thanks, Jennifer. Sorry, Jake. We could pan down, yeah, sorry. To the, pan down for the calves, you know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, you know? continue. So you do 100, 100. Yeah, it's okay. a it's a forty two minute workout, and I do it now. It's it's my drug. It's always been that way. It's my medicine. It's it's. Uh, you didn't finish a, a treadmill seven body part and abs seven seven seven. What two else? body parts oh, in the back of the treadmill. So it's forty two minutes all together. And that's what you do all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same music. I have, I have my Are you serious. I've got my seventy five. So that I have ESPN on with no sound, and uh, I but I go into a different place though. You see, four yeah. thirty in the morning, it's dark. Um, I walk into the gym and I, I, I just, it's, I'm, I'm a very regimented guy. Yeah. So it's my reps. Life, my right, my life is reps. Yeah. Right. And totally. Uh, and me too. I feel this is a very fitnessy thing though. Like I feel a lot of fitness people are very regimented in yeah. this way. It keeps them like on point mentally. It does. I, yeah. I, do you write things down? I mean, I've got I, yellow pads. I do. I have all notes everywhere. Place. I have notes scribbling everywhere. I got it. Me too. Yeah. I write everything down. You know why? Because you write something down, it becomes real. Yeah. If you have an idea in your mm -hmm. mind, it, it just swirls upstairs. Yeah. But if you really write something down, that becomes real. I totally so agree. So whatever that idea is, you look at it, you read it. You know, I totally agree, and that's and that's the that's the name of the game. That's that's what I've always done. I agree. Do you want to tell me your story quickly? Because I, I interrupted you. Oh, so so, but look, the the fitness story is this: is that um, I forgot what year it was, but everybody was doing these themed restaurants. Yeah. So the Hard Rock Cafe was already open, but Planet wow. Hollywood was coming. The All Star Cafe, Models Cafe, Holly Davidson. Uh, oh, the Rainforest yeah. Cafe, all these places. So I had this idea that I wanted to do something called Eden, like the Garden of. Mm -hmm. Universal Studios was just expand; they're just expanding, and because of my relationship with those guys, they were going to give me a restaurant at the new walk. You know, the new yeah. sort of Universal Walk up yeah. there. And I said, I'm going to put together all the fitness people. So I called Richard. I called Jane. Uh, I called Tammy Lee Webb. I called Jack LaLanne. Um, Jack LaLanne, Tammy Lee Webb, uh, Richard, myself, and Jane. Right? Those are the, yeah. the, to me, were the five people that, yeah. that, that I thought would be the biggest people in, yeah. in the industry. Uh, Jane, who at the time was married to Ted, right? right? Uh, which, yes. which was great. You know, said, Jake, I'd love to do it. But, you know, Ted said, don't sweat it. So it was, it, it was, it was Richard, uh, Tammy Lee Webb, and Tammy Lee I knew. Now, she did Buns of Steel, right? right? I remember. But Tammy Lee I brought on to um, uh, Fit TV. So she, she was one of our hosts on Fit TV, and she did great. Uh, and she's awesome. And um, Jack LaLanne, which I thought would be just a hoot to have. Yeah. And we used Steve, the great late Steve Roth passed away, and I used his... Uh, bungalow at the Beverly Hills Hotel. And we were meeting there. And we had everything ready to go. Now, this is before, like, California Pizza Kitchen happened. So we were going to have this great, like, the oven was going to be right out right out front. You can see. And Eden, there was a big, like, a, like an orange tree. And I'm a, I've always made Saturdays my day. You know, I follow not a strict diet, but on Saturdays, I eat whatever I want. I've done that since I was 17 years old. Right. Right? I mean, literally, whatever I want. And I thought, since it's a theme park, let's make every day a Saturday. Right. right? So the menu will be every day Saturday. And Richard, super bright guy, had a great business sense for this stuff. He's a really smart business guy. Um, Tammy Lee was great. Jack was just funny. And we're at the end of this thing. We're really, we put a deal together. And I said, I had this great idea, guys. Let's sell our videos in when people are waiting to be seated, let's sell our stuff. Oh my gosh. Right? Good idea. Right. But they're gonna go eat and they're gonna go buy an exercise. No, 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 no. Before they got seated, right? So I got in the car and I got home and I started getting phone calls from each person, not to say who it's gonna be, saying, I don't want my video next to hers. I don't want my <laughs> video next to his. Like going, what? You guys nuts? This is such. This is a no-brainer, guys. Yeah. Your audience. We're all. We we can all share audiences here. That's the thing. 
and we, by the way, we got a bunch of press that we were doing this, and I had gotten more press on doing the videos, doing nothing, right? Because it never happened, right? That, oh. and thankfully, all I could say is thank goodness, because you know all those themed restaurants were all uh, yeah. went to shit. They were all you know? a total dud. Oh my goodness! But these people but were complaining they, afterwards. They like, didn't want to. Everybody, did. but you know what? Though thankfully it happened. It was one of those crazy moments. But we had about five months together, where we would meet once, eh, once, once or twice a month. Uh, but they liked then, each other back in the meetings. Yeah, but not when they didn't want their stuff sold they beside didn't want each their other. Stuff sold beside Why? Each other. Who cares? Who knows? Whatever. But you know what? It was a blessing. It was a blessing because we all saved ourselves a lot of money. A hundred percent. But right? that's a, that was like the fallout because of that. But it was one of those things that there's something that didn't work out that you think would be a perfect thing at a perfect time at a perfect moment. And, it, and unfortunately, it, usually I would have pushed it, and for some reason I didn't push it. That's and interesting. And it didn't work out. So you know. Whew, Exactly. Like well, you and then don't quit. So, you know, um, I got involved in a number of different things. I invested in some beverage companies. I was an investor in Zico Coconut Water. You too? Um, A2 Brew Well, tip. Jesse. You know, I know. I feel well, like Jesse. everybody was an investor well, in that Well, I was thing. with Jesse from the beginning. You yeah. were? Well, Jesse and Kenny. Yeah, from the beginning. Were you and Jesse the same well, equal partners in this well, thing? No, no, no. Oh, okay. No, 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 no. And then um, I, was, uh, I was an investor in Avion Tequila. Uh, oh yeah, with Doug Ellen, you know Kenny Dichter yeah. and the guys, and uh, you, I had you a, did Avion I, also. I had a home in Nantucket, and those guys oh, uh, we do a trade out, and they'd stay at my place when I left, and they cooked up the idea for Turtle to have a job to do a tequila company, and I had some shares in that. That's and so, so funny. two two successful things, right? Yeah, I didn't do anything. I mean, it was I, just right place, right time. Yeah, people started thinking, well. He You're knows lucky. about the beverage industry, yeah. and I'm seeing all these different beverage things. I mean, long story short, I had a couple other ones, and I went to my friends at Coca-Cola, who are my partners. What do you think of this? Eh, too small. You should call this guy. He has this company called LA Libations. It's think of Silicon Valley as a tech incubator. This is a beverage incubator. His name is Danny Stepper. And I said, oh, that's interesting. El Segundo, right down the road from me. We get together, we sit down, and we come up with this... Uh, this plan to launch Don't Quit. Now, Don't Quit, we didn't really talk about. In 19, well, I was cut from my eighth grade basketball team, right? Which was a devastating moment in my life at the time. And uh, a friend gave me a poem called Don't Quit. And don't ask me why I kept it. Don't ask me why that person gave me the poem. But uh, it became like a Bible verse to me for my life. And in 1981, I trademarked the words Don't Quit. And I've, and I've owned the trademark ever since. And we wow. launched, um, launched Don't Quit the Beverage Protein Shake uh, few, right before the pandemic hit. Uh, and uh, we've muscled all the way through, no pun intended. Right. And uh, we have a thing called Don't, Don't Quit Max, uh, which is high protein, 33 grams of protein, 26 vitamins and mineral, uh, one gram of sugar. And we just now, we acquired a company called X2, which wow. is a... Uh, Energy drink, uh, sports, sports energy, which 32 sports teams have been using. Wow. And uh, a great new group of guys, uh, Madison Square Garden Sports are involved now. A uh, fresh $10 million of funding was put in place. We have an incredible product, a great team, and uh, I'm super excited to see where this goes. Oh, and my it's, gosh. It's just uh, super you fun. You don't quit. No. You don't no, quit. We don't quit. Look at us, Jennifer. We We're don't sitting. quit. That's We've been true, on now Jake. four hours and sixteen minutes. I know. Minutes. I know. How long has it been? Okay, sorry. We can we can wrap this up. This has been actually a, to me anyway. I'm super fascinated by all of this stuff. So you don't quit. You have a product called Don't Quit. <laughs> you've had so many different. I mean, the phases that you've had so much success in your career, and I I understand why though because you bring such enthusiasm wow, and it's like you. you're very it's like you're like very likable you really are well that's very sweet no thank you are you. you're super likable well, it's it's thank i you. believe that people have to create their own opportunities and luck and you're one obviously like you put yourself in the right places to meet the right people who are great conduits to other things that were right. very successful but it's because of you who you are if you were a dud it wouldn't it wouldn't have worked <laughs> right. out this well, way but that's you the know? thing but that's it's it's interesting that's what i say like to my kids it's about yeah. personality a lot of I it mean, is. especially now especially we, you have two kids right yep. and i'm sure you sit with them and with social media and all the challenges yeah. there 
what is lost with all of this is that face-to-face -face communication yeah. the of ability to know how to connect with people. Having to connect, yeah. right. And socialize right. properly. And that's the thing. We can get off into a parenting thing now, which we I know. Do, we but... should do a whole other podcast <laughs> yeah. on that, right? Right, absolutely. Um, okay, Body by Jake, uh, how do people find you if they want to You know, know what? Official Body by Jake on Instagram. Yes. Oh. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not very good at it. I, I'm trying. Okay. I'm working hard at it. You don't but, have um, to be. You've already proven yourself. You don't need to I prove know, yourself on I try. Instagram. You know what? I can stand up in front of 10,000 people and give a speech. It's like an impromptu speech. Yeah. And I'll say, oh, I'm going to post this photo uh, yeah. on Instagram. <laughs> and I'll go like this for 30 minutes. Uh, <laughs> what am exactly. I supposed to say on this I thing? Know. And I go, screw it. I just don't do it. And when I do post, it's a, uh, honestly, exactly. you know what? You're it's old a, school. That's why. And that's more important. I'd much rather get up and speak to people. I totally you know, agree with you. I think like it's that. amazing. But you're awesome. This has been great. I've had a ball. Me and, too. This uh, has been really fun. Thank you. I look forward to seeing what you have next. We're gonna, you this, know? Is, this is just like, you know, step one in our in our evolution of, of friendship. So. Yeah. And, and, and you're probably the only person that I've met that has five treadmills I know. Well, this in is their good. house. You know why? Because I had to deal with Woodway, which is probably why yeah, yeah. And i like treadmills very very much <laughs> <laughs> also i want to be able to remind myself i should be on that thing like i like to no they really you have, you have treadmills on. all over the house i do i'm not joking around. have know. you not seen my house i have a cold plunge a sauna i have like red lights it's like a wellness resort and it's like the no, whole house great. has been turned into like <laughs> a wellness resort slash equinox so are we good oh we're awesome. still okay good thank you jennifer <laughs> don't quit don't quit don't quit don't quit. Thank you. Oh my gosh, you're so cute.